Do-do-do. My game. Oh, so you're streaming too? Huh? You're streaming? No. Um, uh, what game is this? Uh, Paraland Adventures, right? No. Well, yeah. Well, no. It's the Greyhawk one, but well, I have two games here. One says yeah. one shots. So yeah, one e one one e one shots is the game. Oh, right. That's the one. Duh. I get confused. Dude, what am I gonna do with you? I'm multitasking. I guess. You try to play one e, do your lessons, and cut cocaine, man. <laughs> Oh, wait, did I say that out loud? Yeah. Why, yes, you did. <laughs> Mom, you didn't hear that, did you? Oh, she didn't hear that. Okay. She's right behind me. I'm in, oh, no, I'm in, but I don't see nothing. It'll take a, a minute to, to load. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Loading Pomar. Yep. Yep. It takes a little bit to load. I'm still working on finding a way to... Pomar. Is it pronounced Pomar or Pomar? Pomar. The J. Yeah. Yep. Jalapeno. You say tortilla? Yeah. Exactly. See, now you're getting it. Spanglish, man. All right, folks, let's start rolling in here. Give us a sound check out there. I appreciate anybody that shows up early. Get yourself a good seat. Grab your popcorn, candy, and beverage of choice. Put your feet up, relax. Be prepared to be entertained with quality entertainment. Well, everybody, slap happy favorite monk is here. Yes, sir. As the only one that matters. Halberds and Fist. That is our new slogan. We are the Halberds and Fist Collective. That's going to be the new name of our group. I like like Boats and Joes. (laughs) (laughs) Still, I think it should have been a different name. Could have been what? Varus is Rose? Maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Gotcha. We're going to name it after the thief. That's <laughs> Got it. I mean, the one who's done all the, all the, all the real work. Just say it. You've done all the real work. Daring and dying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, we're down to one last original party member, and now he's going to be rolling out on us. Kind of sad. What? I Arthur, know what? Arthur, you're not one of the original, though. Well, I guess you are, kind of. No, you already said it. I'm not. You're kind of. You're original in the sense that you're original player, but, you know, had you not gone out there to try to shake hands and make friends with a ghoul, Ukla might still be with us. And he could fit right in here in the Pomarge. Say, hey, look at there, look at there. Monkey's raiding with one viewer. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, Tina. I appreciate that. Everyone counts, man. Everyone counts. Drive those numbers up. Let's get this party started. Looks like our stream is going okay. Oh, no. Norton protection. No, thank you. I got my new uh, animation email. They finally approved it. Finally! Yeah. Sweet. Is that out on uh, drive through? Yeah, Lando, I'm working on. Uh, I still have a lot to learn about setting some of this stuff up. Like, 
I may do a socials one and I actually want to put a dice roller one out there. I don't have it. I've got one that started, but I don't have it implemented where people could just X, just like you do in discord exclamation point roll. So they can roll dice for us, which is kind of cool. And to be honest, what I really want to do is there is a plugin or a module that allows stream chat to be posted to the foundry chat and anything you type in the foundry chat, including dice rolls can get sent to Twitch. So they're sort of like interconnected problem is something's broken on it and I just don't want to try to debug it. So I'm waiting for them to put a fix out. So once they do, once whatever you type in the game chat, it'll show up in Twitch and vice versa. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Problem is, it's it's not that I don't know or understand on how to get some of this stuff set up. It's just once I'm done for the day, it's like I have other things that I need to get done. I really just don't want to sit and spend an hour or two hours extra or whatever playing with some of this stuff. But eventually I, f I carve out some time for myself and get it done. Like I've been talking previously, I want to do, I really want to start doing Monday through Friday over my lunch break because I don't go anywhere. I work from home. So I'll just sit here and I'll do, I'll call, I'm going to call them the, uh, the one shot chasers. <clears throat> and so it's just a little hour of doing something, right? So just stream it while I'm doing it, you know, Hey, let's stream foundry and, or let's stream setting up my, uh, the back end of my, uh, my Twitch stream and stuff like that. Just little one hour sort of get some streaming in for different content just to kind of see. So, so anyhow, anybody that's rolling in, that's not a, a party member already. We appreciate you rolling in there. Don't forget to click that follow button, hit the little bell thingy, my Bob. Make sure you get notified whenever we go live. But yeah, I think like I have the, uh, I have the, the timer going. So I have like, you know, Hey, you know, follow this person or Hey, follow us on, on uh, Twitter or whatever. Instead of doing that, just doing the socials. I've seen a lot of people do that. I kind of like that. So people in stream can just hit exclamation socials and it'll show you everything, Twitch, discord, all that stuff. Do, do, do. Let's see, let's see. Ooh, sent a tweet. Yeah, we're getting some folks out there. Looks like it's mostly our party, but hey, it's all that matters. Hey, so anybody listening to the stream? We sounding okay across the stream out there? Woo. <laughs> I sound fine. Woohoo. Don't know how to take that, but I appreciate it. Kind of disappointed this stream doesn't get to see uh Oliver the halfling. Those of you that watched our 5e stream on Friday got to see him.
It's always exciting time. Always exciting. Lord Gazumba in the house. What? Hey, Jay. Appreciate it, brother. Four minutes and counting. Here we go. Don't shout out Lord Kazumba. You don't have to shout out Lord Kazumba. Everybody knows who he is. He has the gravitas. <laughs> Appreciate the lurk, Jay, man. Go take take a break. You do enough for this for the uh for the community out there. Let us pick up the slack a little bit. Although, like I said, it's probably going to be a disappointment for those of you that watched us on Friday for our 5e game where we had Oliver the halfling in-house, but it can't be helped. Oliver had to head home to South Carolina. But get ready. Here in about another minute or so, we're going to be, not even that, it's going to be probably about 10 seconds or so. I can never remember which one is the long one is it the one e or the five e? I like completely forget every time. So let's just go ahead and kick this thing off just in case. <laughs> Should be using the uh, the cleric saving throws. All right, thank you.
How perfectly timed was that? Perfectly timed. I never get, I'm always early. I'm always late. There's always like five seconds left or I'm five seconds late or whatever the case may be. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Parentland Adventures. Tonight's 1-1 Shots. I appreciate you guys spending your Monday evening with us. Since there is no Monday Night Football, where else would you rather be than right here getting quality entertainment from Greyhawk Creatives, of which I am a part. Thank you to one Lord Kasumba who's in the house. He says he's lurking, taking a day off of Twitch. Don't buy it. Do not buy it. I think that he just wants a little bit of time to himself to prepare whatever he's got up his sleeve uh, coming out from that creative brain of his. Uh, I'm DM Sean, your host, bringing you together as always with some of the finest that the internet has to offer in terms of gamers. Fellers, how are you doing? Let's start with you, Zad Kiel. Uh, are you done with your training? Are we going to be able to steal you away from whatever it was you were doing just before stream? No, but I will, <laughs> I will shift back and forth. It's not as if he doesn't pay attention anyway. So what does it matter? He's always, oh, wait, shit. It's my turn. What am I doing? Okay. never mind. Hang on. Let me get back to my training. That's fine, dude. How'd your week go? Are you okay? Did you get your taxes done? Are you ready? Oh, no, you said you had to get somebody to do your taxes for you. That's right. Because you're rich and do all kinds of this fancy money manipulation crap. And uh, so now you got to have somebody do taxes for you. I'm that rich sucks. in empty pockets. That's yes. 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 Me too. I'm rich in spirit, man. Um, yeah. Arthur is not with us tonight. Arthur, I don't know if he is going to be back. I still have to talk to him. I know he's coming back to our 5e game every other Friday night. Um, but unfortunately, he's not with us again tonight just because of his work schedule. Um, now that he's got something that's a little more permanent and he's sort of knows when, I got to find out if he is going to come back. I, I can't guarantee 100% that he's going to be coming back because he does have a lot of things going on. And I think that uh, two games, at least streamed games, is is, an, is pretty tough for him. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. But anyway, Loquacious, thank you for making the uh, the second game, man. After all the issues we had last week, I was really, really wondering whether or not you were going to come back. We appreciate you sticking it out with us. And as I told you, there is no need for you to go out and have to do get whatever it is that you're going to get just to try to get into the forge. Um, we are in no hurry, but I appreciate you coming back, man. How's your week on? Well, <clears throat> if I can deal with the VA, I can handle dealing with a <laughs> back and forth with my technical problems here. So I will tell you my minor story with the VA. Um, I never claimed anything when I retired because I really didn't. I was I was in relatively good health, right? I didn't really have to worry about anything. But my brother finally talked me into claiming because I did have back issues. Um, uh, I thought my hearing they had to reset my baseline hearing twice um, during the twenty years that I was that I served in the Navy. I had um, uh, a wrist issue where I actually. Um, when I did the PRT, uh, semi-annual physical readiness test, or anytime I worked out, I can't do regular push-ups. I have to do like knuckle push-ups because I can't bend my wrist enough to, to get it because it really starts to hurt. And so that and my high blood pressure, right? So I had like, and it's not really like high, high, but it's like borderline high blood pressure. It's like, yeah, we're going to put you on this really low dose of blood pressure meds just because just in case it goes a little high, we want to make sure we catch it in time. So. So anyway, I went and I put all that in. Um, I thought my hearing and I thought my back for sure were going to get me. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. The only thing they gave me was my wrist. They, they said high blood pressure. We are proving it as a disability, but you get 0% because it's such low. You have to meet these certain requirements to get anything from the VA. And so out of all that that I submitted, they gave me like 10%. And so I went back to specialists and doctors and got the paperwork and sent it back to the VA. And the VA came back and said, yeah, sorry, you, you didn't give us anything new, right? There's nothing new. It's the same thing you submitted before. I'm like, yeah, no, it's not. It's all this addendum stuff that all these specialists. So now I'm debating. It's been three years now, right? And I'm like, you know, do I really want to keep fighting that fight or do I want to get a lawyer? Or I just want to say, you know what? I wasn't planning on getting anything for, uh, disability wise from the VA in the first place. You know, I get a, a couple hundred bucks a month disability, whatever. So, but anyway, that was my story with the VA. So I feel you, man. Having a fight with the VA is, it's not as much fun as, uh, as playing Dungeons and Dragons, even if you're playing blind. So yeah, I, I feel your pain, but I definitely appreciate you coming back, man. 
What about you, Deglin? How you doing, brother? I'm doing great. Just, Dude, uh, talk to us, man. Tell us why you're doing great, because the rest of us are feeling like kind of crap, and we need a little bit of boost of motivation here. We got to kind of pump up the volume, as they say. Ah, well, I made a Viking shield. I oh. made shoes. Uh, turn nice. shoes. Um, Dude, you're like a cobbler and everything, man. Yeah. So what happens when the zombie apocalypse comes? We need to make sure we have Deglin's address so we can go hang out with him because he's going to make all of our weapons, armor, and shoes because I ain't about to run around barefoot. Fuck that. Ain't happening. Mm, peach cobbler. <laughs> That's, it. <laughs> That's it, man. We're all going to have peach cobbler shoes. Hey, Agamaran, thanks for showing up, dude. You uh, you missed our intro, the exciting pump up the volume music, but that's all right, man. Always glad to see you out there in chat. As everybody didn't see, as we went live, Lord Kasumba jumped in. He's uh, he's out there lurking. Appreciate uh, his support as always. Varus, man, how you doing, man? Varus is our latest and greatest uh, moderator, so mind your P's and Q's when Varus is around. He's got a big-ass band hammer now, so watch it. <laughs> How you doing, boy? Uh, it was than it was. Good, um, good, good, good. It's almost Valentine's um, Day, man. You can buy yourself you know, some flowers. I was in the ER last shit. week. Dude, stop it. And, uh, stop it. Stop. Stay out so, of the ER, man. Yeah, you, know, you, you get in there for one thing and you come well, out with like 10 Well, it'd be nice if they did shit right. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's, that's, that's what they have. Uh, um, what, a malpractice insurance? Is that what they call it? Yeah. P's and Q's, Agamera, and mind your pints and quarts. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I'm sorry to hear that you're in the ER, but I'm glad you were, uh, you're able yep. to make it back to I'm us, not. man. I am too. Good, man. So um, so what you're saying is, so I was talking it to Loquacious. Yeah. More TV. I did a uh, second episode of my Temple of Home Mental Evil campaign last Saturday. Good. So that awesome. went well. Yeah. Good. See, we're going to have to uh, find out where that is sometime. You need to put it on Discord or something so we can follow along or whatever. I'm not saying, I know you don't stream, but we should we should find a way that we can kind of see what's going on. So that'd be fun. I like the Temple of Elemental Evil. I've just, I've never, I ran like part of it. I've never run the full thing just because it's such a big, long thing. My party and players always ended up getting bored. So they'd clear out like a level and they're like, okay, we're done. We're going to get out of here. I'm like, what? Seriously? Okay, whatever. I never, I never shoehorn my party into anything. I'll, 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 even on here, it's like if you guys decide that you want to go somewhere else, I'll figure something out. I've got stuff that I could do on the fly, I guess. But so far, so good. My party has been accepting of the pulling of the nose ring that I that I throw them out there. So, well, I appreciate all you guys showing up tonight. As always, like I said out there, folks, we have the the finest gamers and the finest players that there are when it comes to AD First Edition. Um, and we are here, obviously, every Monday night, 7.30 to 11.30-ish, depending upon when the stream gets done. Hopefully, you'll hang out with us for the entire time. If you're if you're also into 5th edition, um, we have a 5e Greyhawk game set in the country of Perrinland um, that we run every other Friday. We just streamed this past Friday, so this upcoming Friday is our, is our off week. So hopefully, you'll be able to catch us uh, the week after that, which is the 18th, which for those that play in that game and follow that game, looks like we will be streaming. Um, so knock on Formica at, uh, um, that that continues to go. Uh, for those of you that follow the stream, uh, you kind of know some of the rules, but for those that are new to us or watching us uh, uh, on video for the first time sometime, um, as you watch Twitch, of course, you collect tokens at, uh, for the various streams. They're free. Uh, it's just a matter of interacting with the stream. You get things faster, subscribing, you, you earn tokens faster, etc. However, you can turn those tokens in and allow our players to have a nat one or a nat 20. And so if you click the token, it'll pop up the little menu and you can select how many, um, how many, uh, tokens you want to trade in. And like I said, you trade those in for a nat one or nat 20. You can give them to a specific player. You can give it to the DM, give it to the overall group if you wish, meaning the party and let the party hash it out whenever they need it. And basically that allows them to replace any dice roll during the game that they want to. So if they have a nat 20 in their pocket and speak of the devil, the party now has a nat one given to them by a Gomerand, a friend of the show for sure. He's here every stream. Uh, I just need to get him to stop giving this 
shit to the party, start giving it to the DM. But hey, you know, whatever, whatever. I, I appreciate it. It's okay. Not a big deal. Um, yeah, <laughs> pretty much almost every stream. But anyway, um, so the party now has a nat one. So that's pretty awesome, man. Appreciate that, Agamaran. So see, just like that, you turn in some tokens, the party has a nat one. So now if the party happens to get hit with a critical hit by the DM, the party can then swap that out for... Hey, thanks, dude. Yeah, I get the coins. Hell yeah. I get the real coins. That's awesome. Thanks, man. You didn't have to do that, but uh, we appreciate the love. So anyway, like I said, you know, you kind of, you're able to do that for the party, as, and the only rule is that they have to have it before they... Uh... Okay, hang on a second. Something's missing here. I think it's because I have to be showing it. Yeah, that's not going to work. Oh, well. So what we're, there we go. See, now I have, to, I have to pop it up here, but as soon as I hide it, it goes away. So anyway, let me talk about the last couple things. Again, my, it's sidetracked so easy. Just bear with me. Um, if you haven't clicked the follow button um, and you're new here, please do. Um, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your cohorts. Swing on by, hit that uh, follow button, hit the little bell thingy or whatever so you get notified. Uh, we definitely appreciate yeah, exactly. Oh, look, squirrel. Um, you uh, hit that like button and the follow button. Um, if you really want to show the love, hey, man, I appreciate every subscription that we get. Um, past couple of streams, you guys have just completely blown me away with the uh, the subscriptions that have been given out. Um, and as I've repeatedly said over and over, every penny that comes into this stream, I turn right around and put it back into the stream. Um, get new equipment. Um Hopefully uh, uh, getting a new camera here soon, getting, like I said, just kind of getting my stream set up to, to make it better for everybody and stuff. And then it also helps pay for our hosting service where we host the game, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we don't, we don't ask for anything, but we appreciate everything. And if you're not one of those ones who feels comfortable with the recurring subscription, um, you just want to give a one-time tip. You go to our, our about page on, on Twitch um, hit the tip jar and you can donate, um, however much you want. I think there's like a minimum of a dollar or something like that, whatever it is. But uh, the best thing about that is there's no intermediary. It doesn't go through Twitch or anything. It goes right between you and the, the content provider. That's us. And again, that's how, uh, Cannibal, for those that have watched me do this a hundred times, Cannibal gave us a tip right before Christmas that allowed me to buy this nice little Elgato stream deck. Um, so now I too can be a, uh, a button pushing maniac like Lord Gazumba. Um, and fortunately, um, I've only messed up one time. Um, we won't talk about Lord Kazuma's consistent record on improper button pushing. So anyway, um, if you like our stream, Hey man, hang out, stay for the whole thing. Um, if you like Greyhawk in general, there's all kinds of Greyhawk content providers out there. We are the Greyhawk creatives as set up by Lord Gazumba. Of course, he is our partner in crime. He set up the channel. You go to twitch.tv slash teams. I think it is teams slash Greyhawk creators. And uh, you go out there. It'll it'll come around in my in my alerts or whatever as I, uh, I have these automated alerts that come out. Oh, I look right there. Twitch.tv slash team. Team, one word, team, singular, slash Greyhawk creatives. You go out there and you can see all the different Greyhawk creative content providers that are out there. So, so anyway. Um, one last little note, um, uh, you may be seeing on our stream between Zadkiel and Loquacious, um, Arthur is not there. Um, so Arthur, our wizard may or not be coming back to us. Um, however, Loquacious is having an issue, uh, being able to run Foundry, um, on his computer. And so he can't get into the forge either, et cetera. So long story short, um, what we have done is we have set up a, a little, um, a little screen there where he can roll his dice inside of discord. Um, the upside is it's there. The downside is, is usually I have to have that window open in order for it to show. So if you watch every once in a while, that, that little uh, overlay goes away and Arthur is there. That's because for some reason I've closed my discord screen because I only do have two monitors. Um, but thanks to you, maybe I'll have four and five monitors and I could do all kinds of cool shit. Uh, but anyway, that's just, uh, it's just the way it is. So gentlemen's party members, folks out there in interwebs who are still with us after my 
constant bloviating as we start the stream. Hey, quick save, man. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Um, thanks for showing up. So anyway, um, when last we met our party, having completed their task of clearing out the quarry over in Dark Shelf across the harbor, the, across the Sea of Grant, Jernat, I can never pronounce it right, so I'm just going to say, I always say Grant. Um, but other folks have told me I've said it wrong, but who cares? That's my world, and that's what we're going to call it. So across the water, where Dark Shelf was, there was the land of the Pomarge, and on the Pomarge was this town or this city of Highport. And as the party completed their mission at, uh, at Dark Shelf Quarry, they were approached by a priest of Tritherian by the name of Yeli, uh, Yelly Tan, to be exact. Now, Yelly informed them that his master, Makaro Valestine, had been working feverently over in the High Port region to try to free slaves and get them escorted out of the city and from the surrounding lands and, and get them sent on their way home. However, apparently, those who run the slave trade in Highport had become aware of this illicit operation. Their product was gone missing. They were not happy. And so they have since <clears throat> really clamped down on everybody going in and out of the city. And so now, uh, Makaro Valestine, the, the high priest of Tritherian had to basically went dark. His group had not heard from him, at least outside the walls of Highport. Those, for example, Yelly Tan, who, who made his home in Dark Shelf, had not heard from Makaro in quite some time. And so the party, having displayed bravado and, and willingness to put their lives on the line for the slaves that were being run in and out of the Dark Shelf quarry, he asked, would they be willing to go to Highport? And of course, out of the goodness of their hearts and a little bit of coin, a little bit of potion, they agreed. And so last episode, the party set sail from Dark Shelf across the sea into Highport. In Highport, they went and they discovered a place known as the Steward's Hatch. And within the Steward's Hatch Tavern, they found the missing Makaro. And he did confirm to them that the city had locked down all of the gates and all the exits where they were trying to smuggle the slaves out and get them freed. And so he asked the party if they would be willing to clear out some sea caves because these old sea caves had twisty turny passages that Makaro was certain would lead up to the villa wherein he had the... Um, the, a group of slaves ready to go. And his concern was that the more slaves that they freed, eventually the slavers would come knocking and they would discover their hideaway and they would all be hung, obviously, or worse, put into slavery. And so the party, getting, uh, getting all of this information, bought their gear, got themselves a small little boat. Uh-oh. What happened? All right. Lucretius, what did he say? And why did he, uh, my automated, <laughs> my automated, uh, um, moderator out there automatically removed, uh, loquacious. Is it, Yeah. Did you do something in all caps? Is that what it no, was? Dude, I don't even know if I had a capital in there. That's pretty interesting. So, so what you're saying is you had potty mouth. And the stream moderator went out there. I'll I'll go back and look what it said. Unfortunately, I don't. I can't do it right now. So we'll check it out. Um, I don't know if uh, if Varus, you want to want to check it out and see what what the because uh, I have an automated uh, moderator out there too, and it you know usually it says hey so and so said yeah, this. Yeah, trying to undo it and it's not. Yeah, well, that's pretty it said, stupid. It said he rolled a ninety four for Sion. Really? Oh, it, it deleted me on that one too. Yeah. Oh, I That's... must be doubly bad. I'm getting my. I was praising Gosumba and rolling ninety fours, <laughs> and I'm getting thrown out for it. Good golly. Oh man, we're gonna have to check that. I may have to turn off the moderator, but I really get 
concerned about doing that because it's caught some pretty good stuff sometimes. So apologies for that, sir. So uh, my take on that is uh, just don't just don't praise Lord Kazumba. That's 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 what I took away from that. You praise Lord Kazumba and you get the the hammer band. So yeah, I, next time I'll just <laughs> kick him. There you go, kick Lord Kasumba, and we're good. So anyway, the party uh, they managed to skirt the the edges of the cliffs and the water, and just as low tide was arriving, right between low tide and slightly after. Low tide hit at 5 a.m. Probably about 5:30 ish. They rolled into the sea cave indicated by um, Makaro, and immediately they were beset upon by a um, a group of large crabs. So fortunately, they managed to subdue said crabs. But now, why is my... I was looking at my map. I was like, why did my map not start playing the pretty music like it was supposed to? Oh, because it didn't have it in there. What the heck? Oh, I know why. Crud. It's because I deleted, I went through and I cleaned out a lot of stuff. So now I'm going to have to figure out, we'll just put this in there. Let's see if this plays or not. There we go. You guys now find yourselves standing. Your boat has actually drifted in as the low tide um, as I should say, as you can see that it's low tide, your boat is sort of on a sandy shelf, um, right where you killed the crabs. You can see that the sand slopes away into a cave across the way. You can see a little sandbar, um, that leads into caves deeper into the north. However, to your left you can see that the well let's let's do this let me just give you the whole description of this whole area here and then we can talk the clear waters of the tidal pool reveal alabaster sands below the shimmering surface where a myriad of life and color stretches in every direction coral in the shades of white red purple and salmon provide shelter to schools of tropical fish that drift and mingle with the gently wafting fronds of seaweed and anemones to the left, you can see a magnificent multi-stage waterfall tumbles down the wall of a cliff face, its misty spray scattering the incoming daylight in a small rainbow. To the, to the right, which is actually directly across from you, but it's kind of to the right, you can see a low undercut is visible at the base of the sides of the cove. And so, as I said, directly across from you, you can see this little undercut. Um... Uh, and because of the low tide, it looks like you could take your boat underneath it, right? It's sort of like a little rock arch, but at high tide, you could see the wetness and you could see the moss and all the slime along the walls, all along the edges. And that indicates how high the water gets. And you could see the water rises some 10 to 12 feet up the sides of the walls. So you could see just what will happen in high tide. And during high tide, that little undercut that you can see at the far, it is, um, it would, no it, it's, it's open now where you could take your boat through. But if it was high tide, you would actually have to go underwater and swim to get under it. Well, I think, uh, we, we still have to drag the boat across the sandbar, right? To get in. Yeah, the yeah. From the ocean to here, you would have to. It, there, it's sort of like, not. It's not. It is. I guess you would have to say drag because the water, the waves come in and it goes over the wet sand, and so it would help you push the boat along. Um, because it's not like completely dry. The the waves from from out in the ocean sort of splash in here over the rocks outside, and it sort of covers it a little bit and then the, the tide roll or the waves roll back etc you know just like on a beach sure. um the the walls around here though you can see it's open to the sky above um and the waterfall itself you can see it's probably about 100 feet is how tall the waterfall is and then the rocks 
continue above that to the tops of the cliff and whatnot. Um, but it's sort of dark in here, but you're getting just the rays of sunlight as they're breaking over the horizon. So you get sort of that little early early morning light starting to shine in here, kind of giving it that, like I said, the the mist causes a, a rainbow sort of a view, but you still get the, the sparkles off the water as the sun is beginning to, to shine in here. Um, not sure how deep the, uh, um, how deep the water is here, but it, it does look, this pool inside this cave definitely looks over your head. Like if you were to stand in it, it would probably be over your head. Um, hey, Dan, can I stick my halberd in there and see if I can reach the bottom? Sure. Sure. So where you guys are now, it's it's relatively easy. It's only a couple of feet deep. But you can see that the, the water slopes away. Um, the slopes away from you. So as you move in, um, after about 10 feet in or so, you can see that it's probably at least 12 or 13 feet deep. Oops. Well, and everybody. Ahead. Arthur. Oh, one other thing I want to say, um, I don't know if anybody was, I, I know monkey, you were on our, on the, the five E on, uh, on Friday. If you go into the forge and you click on your token and you write, or you mouse over your token and you, and you right click, it now opens up, the toggle uh, on the left hand side you can see three light items um, now for 5e it it'll detect whether or not you have torches or whatnot it's supposed to do it in this game too but it, I found that it only worked if you had a light spell so I turned it off however if you have a torch or a light spell or a lantern you can right click and then the top token is a light spell so here I'm toggling Arthur's light spell um, and then you click it again and turn it off. If you click the middle one, that's if you have a torch or a lantern, I mean. And then if you click the bottom one, it's if you have a torch. Now, I haven't set any of the settings to make it look torch-like or make it look lantern-like or anything like that. I, these are all default settings. But just so you know, Arthur does have a torch and he is going to turn on the torch and that should light up for everybody, I hope. Um, if you still can't see, you should be able to as like I said, Arthur. But anyway, um, as you guys move in um, about, you know, 10 feet or so, the, the walls themselves, as you look, it's like you're in a tube. And so the walls themselves of the cave go up, uh, upwards of uh, 100 feet or so. Um, the, the waterfall is about 100 feet. And then beyond that's probably another 40 or 50 feet up before you, it's the top of the cliff. So the cliffs themselves are about 100 feet up, 150 feet up. Um, where you're clicking there, Varus, that's that's the pass-through. That is, it's about, um, you could see that the, the arch is about probably four or five feet above the water. It forms kind of like this overpass, right? Um, or this arch or mini tunnel, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. a pass, a, we call it a pass-through in diving, William. Can we right? get a boat up, up through there? Yes, the boat can. It looks like, but you would all have to, like, scrouch down in the boat and sort of push yourselves along through um, into the, the chamber beyond if you wanted to do that. But, yes, you could do that. But as I said... Well, um, that would probably be best so it doesn't get washed away. Right. <laughs> And then the second thing is, like I said, during, you could see the wetness on the walls that mark where high, high tide is, particularly because there's a lot of uh, um, slime and, and whatnot that cling to the walls. And obviously the walls are still relatively wet from where the water peaks at high tide. Um, and so you could see that's about 10 to, to 12 feet up the wall. So... I think we should row the boat to that pass. You guys agree? Hey. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We should take it further in so it... Because this is definitely not our way into the underside of the okay. town. All right. 
So you guys um, begin to... Oops, hang on a sec. Where'd it, how'd that happen? Okay. Um, you guys begin to move yourselves through this chamber. And Loquacious, as you guys are moving, as I said, at first it was easy to get your halberd to the bottom. But eventually you can see um, with, with Arthur's light especially that the water is just too deep for you to reach the bottom with your halberd. It's more than 10 feet below as you get further into um, uh, into the chamber with the boat. Um, and as you start moving, you guys can see the fish and, and stuff sort of swimming of underneath. And you can see that there is a, um, off to the right, you can see this bed of seaweed wafts lazily in the currents, plainly visible. The water here is very clear, even though it's ocean water, it's still very clear and relatively undisturbed. Um, you can see that it's probably about 20 feet deep at this point as you guys start approaching the, the undercut. Um, the incoming light flickers and glimmers on the white sand distorted by the water and reflected back in a dazzling array of colors. Large disembodied eyes drift among the strands of plant life. Um, and it looks like there may be some, they are maybe some kind of fish, but they, they look like disembodied, disembodied eyes sort of floating in the water. What the? Let's keep an eye on them. Uh... <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so. Can we get back in the boat before we get this one? Because none of us can, like, swim in armor. Zen Hill okay. certainly can't swim in yep. light exactly. mail or whatever. Well, um, it's your guys' like, luck. Oh. It, would, it would have been foolish to heal this deep without being in the boat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's your lucky day. Loquacious will slide his robe up and show a little leg because uh, he is not armored. All right. As you guys move and you, I need, I want everybody to give me a percentage dice roll, please. If you would be so kind. And I will roll for Arthur. I got a 12 DM. Okay. Yep. I see that. See, as I said, I have to click on it in order for it to show. All right. So anybody that got above a 50, so that is Deglin, Varys, and Zadkiel. I need all of you to give me a saving throw versus paralyzation. Thought of a bark. <laughs> yes. That is that what you was, was gonna say? That's what I was. The rock has an overbite. <laughs> All right. Oh, 12. Deglin gets a 12. Varus gets a six. Still waiting on Zadkiel. Come back from your training. And he gets a three. All right. Deglin, what is your saving throw versus uh, paralyzation? Did you make your save? Uh, I, yeah, paralyzation's an eight. Okay. As you watch Deglin and Arthur and Loquacious, you watch as Varus and Zadkiel sort of peer over the side as they sort of notice these strange-looking floating eye fish. And as they look, suddenly you see them seize up, almost like they're choking for a second. And then they both tumble headlong into the water. Oh, crap. Can I grab one of them? Roll. Yeah, can I reach and grab? I will allow you, um, if you can give me a saving throw, well, actually, no, give me, um, a, well, first of all, Loquacious, you're going to grab who? You can grab one or the other. You can grab Varus or you can grab, um, or Zadkiel. The one I'm closest to. I can't see so, who I'm next okay, to on the map. That's, that's Varus. 
Okay, I'm so here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. I need both of you to just do a, a D20 roll-off, and whoever wins, wins. You get an 11. So what did Loquacious roll? Loquacious, I got a two. You rolled a two. So unfortunately, he's too quick even for the nimble-fingered monk as you go to grab him and he just tumbles into the water. By the way, Varus, currently you are paralyzed. Um, as the as you sort of, it's sort of like think of it as a siren song, as it sort of captures the attention. But these eyes have this strange hypnotic effect on you, and you become literally paralyzed, and you go splooshing into the water. Deglin, I need you and um, Zadkiel. Oh, it's an eye oh. thing. I forgot to tell you, I have cataracts, so I don't... Yeah, whatever. Sleep. So, Zadkiel, <laughs> Zadkiel, you rolled that three, right? Well, that was your... Yep, I need you to roll again. You got a 14, so I need Deglin to roll as well. No. 14, so a tie goes to to the uh, runner, and Deglin, you managed to grab a hold of Zadkiel before he falls over, and he falls into the bottom of the boat, <clears throat> nearly capsizing you guys. However, unfortunately, his heavy weight tilts the boat, and it's just enough to send Varus catapulting over the side out of the range of, of Loquacious. As a sploosh, he goes tumbling into the water. As soon as you see Varus tumble into the water, Suddenly you watch these these waving vines that are down there, these, these sea anemones and these sort of waving vines down there in the ocean. They suddenly look almost as if they're grabbing, and you watch as they sort of wrap themselves around Varus, wrapping around his waist, and begin to pull him down into the water. I need us to go. Let's do... Where is it? I know I've got it here somewhere. Man, I can't believe that I didn't uh I didn't save some of this music and I do apologize. Uh I don't have any combat music. Damn it. <laughs> that kind of sucks. Um what do we want to use then? Let me I wonder if there's anything that's no, that won't do. Got any running water? Some... Yeah, that's that's actually what I can do. I was looking. I actually had one that was the running water that I wanted, but I got again. I was trying to clean this up because it was taking so long to uh, to uh, to do. But let's just do this one. That'll work. Yep. All right. So now we are. We're gonna have to go into our combat zone. So let's talk about actions. We know that oops. We know that uh Varus is in the water. Varus, what is your constitution, by the way? It is a sixteen. Sixteen? Okay, what's your your plus is a plus two, right? Yep. Okay. All right. So, system right. shot is 95 and resurrect is 96. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, sweet. All right, so at least that gives you some time before um, things start to go awry. So, because you have a plus two, there, I'm going to allow you. Um, let's see, a round is roughly a minute. Uh, well, what, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna say two minutes. Um, you can hold your breath basically for two two full minutes, and then after that, um, you start. You're gonna start having issues with whether or not you drown or not. So, let us get with the party. So, loquacious action. All right. So let me make sure I got this straight. So. Varus is being pulled into the, or the seaweed kind of wrapped him up. And it, do I see a figure associated with it or just those weird looking fish? Just, uh, just the fish. They're sort of, the fish are floating in and around the weeds and they are basically hypnotized, right? And it's a paralysis thing. So they hypnotize both Zadkiel and 
Varys, and they both just sort of froze up and tumbled overboard. Fortunately, Deglin was able to grab Zadkiel before he fell overboard, but you were not able to grab Varys. And so these fish don't appear to be attacking or doing anything, but what they did do was they caused Varys to fall into the water and get brought into these basically killer seaweed, for lack of a better term. All right, and now how far, how deep into the water is it? Is it like 10 foot or could I stab it or what? No, no, no. The, no. the weeds are about 20 feet down and each one of those fronds is maybe seven or eight feet long. So the only way to get to him is to actually get into the water and perhaps try to cut him free. Oh, uh, DM, you're leaving me bad options here. This is true. I, so. have, a, I have an idea. Okay. If it's our turn, um, we had the climbing gear with the grapnel hook and the and the rope already in the boat. Could I maybe use the grappling hook and lower down in the water and grab a hold of his clothing and pull him up? Um, it, to be honest, it you could do that. Absolutely, you could try. Um, but you're you're you would have to get it down into hopefully grab a hold of him and pull him out. But you would still have to overcome the weeds. Um, and to be honest, it, if, if you were to do that, it would probably be better if you dove into water with the grappling hook and the rope and somebody went down there and attached it to him and tried to pull him back up that way. But if you want to try it by just dropping it in there, you can absolutely try. It's a little bit more difficult to do it that way than to get down there and just try to wrap it around him. Look, loquacious. Do you think you could dive down with this? And, and you know, well, I think I can. DM, I'll grab that hook and drop my halberd okay and dive into the water to hook that grappling hook around his gear his belt whatever he's got that works best and then come up okay all right so you are going to dive down okay and i'm gonna hold on to the other end of the rope and wait for him to okay give it a tug or something and then i'll start yanking it up all right Arthur really can't do anything right now. So just he's just going to yeah, yeah, he's going to keep he's going to keep an eye on Zadkill, make sure he doesn't fall. All right. So now um I want to see I want to double check what their damage says. Um All right. So what is okay i got you this is what we're gonna do okay cool all right so now we are going to now that we have everybody's actions sort of laid out i am going to just put you uh, i'm only going to put one of these eye things in there because to be honest these things don't really have anything to do with with it it's the weeds underneath so we're gonna put you guys in combat put him in combat and I am going to roll initiative, if that's okay for everybody. Yep. All right. Uh, oh, and Varys, you're, you're already down hit points too, huh? From the last game. Yeah, you're... Uh, a little why, bit, I think. Why this... It's weird. It says you're at 30, 34 of 34, but out on the... He didn't get hit by the crabs. Um, yeah, I am just wondering why it's showing that he's got he's like almost dead on health, but he's like maxed out. So it's just I'm just looking at the indicator on the thing, so that's fine. As we roll, all right, so the creatures reach out first, as I said, and they grab a hold of Varus getting through. So the each frond has a strength of eight. So I am going to roll there's three fronds right so here's the deal there's three fronds that are actually doing the attacking so at least you'll be able to see um what the creatures are right so there's three of them all together um so what they are going to do is uh, basically they roll to hit Varus, um for lack of a better term and so let us do that so i'm going to roll so this is an attack against Varus. Varus, what's your armor class? Minus dexterity, because you don't want to get a dexterity bonus. Um, um, I mean six then. Okay, so armor class six. So they are a 
two hit die creature. I guess I should have had my card. And then, uh, uh, yeah, unless we can, it's going to, yeah, I think it's, say, lost my something. chart. But, uh, I have to recalculate it. I'm not used to. No, that's fine. Yep, so your armor, cla your armor class is four. Your dexterity gave you a minus four. Okay, your armor class is three. So you, right, so armor class is three. So And then if if you add the four, so that would bring your armor, cla armor class back to seven without your dexterity. Missing my chart. There it is. So anyway, I just want to see. They are a two-hit die creature. Sorry for the slow start here. So even if we went armor class 6, they need a 10 or better to hit you. So even if we went to 6, they needed a 10. So the first one hits you. Okay? Uh, so... Is, is it? Yeah. Let me uh, let me correct that. I'm hearing it. It's like drowning your voice out. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Better? Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Yep. Sorry about that. It's like I can't... Uh, hopefully you'll stay this quiet. <laughs> Okay. Um, so anyway, so the first of the three fronds hits you. Now, they have a strength of eight. So compare the total of the strength scores of all entangling fronds versus your the difference in favor of victim times 10 is percent chance. The difference in favor of the weeds is, of, is how many points of damage. All right. So here is the deal. There are three. I got to double check and see the other two and see if they hit first of all. So this is the second one. Eight misses. So that's one miss. And a seven misses. So only one of the fronds has managed to actually physically entangle you. The other ones are still sort of waving. They're not quite in range. This long, the longest one sort of reached out and grabs hold of Varus. So the total strength of the fronds that have attacked you is eight. Okay. What is Varus's strength? My strength is 14. Okay, so 14 minus 8 is 6. So that means there is a you are 6 points higher in strength than this frond that is pulling you. That means you have a 60% chance of breaking free because as you're getting pulled down, the water slaps you in the face and suddenly you realize that you can't breathe and then before it's before anything can happen, before you can react, this frond is totally wrapped around you. You see the other two fronds below you are um, sort of reaching up to grab a hold of you as well, but they haven't quite been able to reach you. So I need you to roll a percentile D, uh, uh, a percentile dice, 60% or better, or 60% or lower, you're able to break free of the frond. Ha ha ha, 95. You're unable to break free. <laughs> go, go ahead and roll. I need Loquacious is now up. Actually, is that who's up? Uh, Deglin, you actually just said that you're just sort of hanging out. Disregard this. I don't know why it did that again. Um, so that one's done. So Deglin, Zad kills down. Varus just went. Arthur's doing nothing. Loquacious, go ahead and uh, you are diving in. Um, I need you to give me a, um, a dexterity check first of all to see whether or not you're able to get down there quickly enough before the round. Otherwise, you'll have to swim another round to get down there. So give me a dexterity. Oh, good golly. What did you roll? I rolled a nat 20. <laughs> Unfortunately, you get down there, and in the first round, you, as, you, as you're swimming down there, you just go to reach out to Varus when suddenly the the uh, reeds or whatever it is wraps around him and jerks him just out of your range as round one has completed and we go to the next round anybody going to change their action for what they're going to do no okay no. I am I am going to roll the dice to I'm see who goes to, first I'm not to to and get myself free but right now you're wrapped up Unfortunately, well, oh. I mean, that, that, okay, it, I will take it like this. Um, you will still be able to um, uh, 
it's a strength check versus a strength check, right? So for oh, okay, okay. for poetic sake, we can say you're cutting free with your dagger, but in a sense, your attack is still going to be strength on strength. And that, right. and that attack is going to be based on how many of the creatures are actually attacking you and have been able to hit you. Uh, we are going to re-roll since that was a tie. And you guys get to go first. Okay, so Deglin, I'm assuming that you're doing the same thing as you're just sort of feeding out the rope to to him. Zad yes. kill. Okay. Varus, since only one of the creatures has still managed to wrap itself around you, I'm still going to give you that 60% chance to try to break free this this round. Ooh. Success as just as uh, uh, as you're sort of you're getting your dagger out and you're trying to saw through these things and they're very very sticky um, uh, or very sandpaper like like they have rough edges as if they can carve in to your flesh and as you as you're cutting through you you can feel the reeds cutting little paper cuts on your arms and stuff as you're cutting free and just as the the other two reeds sort of lunge up to grab a hold of you you manage to rip free and break the the bonds or the the hold that that the one has on you just in time as loquacious swims up behind you with a rope and a grappling hook getting ready to yank you back toward the surface now right. however we have to see if the other if the three manage to strike and hold you guys to pull you back down so the first attack is going to go against loquacious Loquacious, what is your armor class? Seven, Armor right? class seven. All right. Fourteen. As that hits, just as you manage to grab a hold of, of Varus and begin to pull him back, suddenly one of those fronds grabs a hold of you. A second frond comes up to Loquacious. Thirteen. Two fronds manage to grab a hold of you. The third frond tries to re-grab a hold of Varus. Natural 20. So here's how it goes. There are, what is, so Loquacious' strength is 15. Well, we're all here, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> Loquacious' strength is 15. Two of the fronds have struck you. Therefore, they have one point strength higher than you. And that means you suffer, first of all, you suffer one hit point of damage. And I'll take it off your sheet here. You suffer one hit point of damage from the sharp cutting edges of the fronds as they come at you. Varus, only one hit you. You have a strength of 14, so once again, you have a 60% chance of pulling free from the fronds. So I need Varus. Yeah, I'm sorry. So I need Varus to give me his, uh, give me his roll. 95. Unfortunately, no, you are unable to pull free. You don't suffer any... You don't suffer any damage yet. However, certain hands and spells. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. So. Did you, did you say that Loquacious was able to actually reach Varus though at that one point? Yes. Yeah. He got down there to him, and now you see them both struggling down there as the vines have begun to take them both over. So, so that if I was... started pulling right now, I could pull both of them in. So. Here's what would happen. I would allow your strength to be added to the two individuals trying to break free. Okay. I would I would allow that. So here we go. Top of the next round. Um, Loquacious, your constitution is 13. So you, you don't get any pluses. So um, starting next round... Loquacious is going to start suffering one die for suffocation damage. All right. So let us roll the dice and see what happens. The party gets... Oh, it's a tie. Roll again. 
as the party wins again. So, Deglin, you're going to be pulling on these guys, right? Right. And I'm going to okay. ask Zadkill to help me out, too. <laughs> Zadkill is paralyzed right now. Oh, he's still paralyzed. Okay. Yeah, he's still paralyzed. What happened with, with Varus is when he fell into the water and got attacked by the um, by the fronds, it sort of shook him up out of his paralysis, but it was too late because he was already wrapped up. Although wow. Arthur can help. Arthur can yeah. help, Paul. Yeah, every right. little bit counts. So. Yep, so Arthur's strength is 9. Your strength is like 900. <laughs> 20. 20. <laughs> yep. All right, so here we go. So Deglin... First of all, we're going to go with Varus. So Varus, your strength is a 14 added to the 20 and the 9. So that's 29 and 14 is 43 minus 8. So you have a basically a 360% chance that they could pull you free. Let's go ahead and roll. And... The only way you fail is if you roll a, uh, a nat 100. Dang, so close. So you pull, yank, and Varus, fortunately the rope has been tied around you and it manages to pull you free up out of the fronds. For Loquacious, you go ahead. You don't get to add your strength, however... A 29 versus 16, that's 13. So you get a 130% chance to to roll. So just roll a die 100. The only failure will be a 100. That'd be funny if you rolled 100. Oh, 25. <laughs> As you guys manage to yank free, Loquacious feels the, the, uh, the grip of the rope on him and it yanks him back, ripping him free. The powerful force of Deglin's uh, magical belt of strength lending aid to you guys ripping out of the fronds as you go to go away but they do get to get an attack upon you guys as you go first against loquacious natural 20 oh, as he suffers two hit points of damage so that's a total of three so far so leaves him at 11 and the second one uh, DM, my actual starting points are 17 because I got to add three more after I re rolled those ones. So I'm oh, at 14 I got now. Okay, okay, got you. Thanks, sir. All right. And then. And that one. Oh. <laughs> so no damage from the second one. Loquacious, the third one rolls at you. A two <laughs> misses. All right. You guys quickly pull them up, and there's a splash of water as you hear this. <laughs> as water comes like splashing out of their mouths and lungs, coughing and heaving as the as the elf Varus and the human monk Loquacious slide themselves back into the boat. Fortunately, no worse from where, other than a few paper cuts by the fronds below. All right, uh, natural 20 to party. Hey, party has a nat oh, 20. Awesome. Ag run. All right, all right, Thanks, Ag. Somebody to find them. Pour the water, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have anything that's underwater. I cannot get a fireball under the water without hurting everybody. I can't just like. We need a weed eater. <laughs> I'm done, by the way. What's that, sir? I'm finished. Oh, sweet. You're done? All right. Yeah. Booyah, can't touch this. Exactly. Thank you, sir, for the nat 20 for the party. You guys, as you're in the boat, slowly drifting across the top of those weeds, you reach the, the pass, the underpass. And we can basically pull ourselves with the rock. Yeah, that's basically what you have to do. So the water here is probably about five feet deep. So uh, you can push um, or like I said, the, it's narrow enough that the boat will fit in. If you go along one side, you, the, the walls are rough hewn, um, natural um, limestone caverns. 
as you are able to sort of pull your way into the ensuing chamber. All right, make sure we keep an eye on the ceiling, and I don't want nothing dropping down on us. Okay. As you guys move into the pass, you come into another large chamber. Let me see if I can... Uh, I'm going to make far- a note. <laughs> yeah. The far side of this undercut emerges into a second tidal pool with water just as clear and sea life just as colorful. The sides of this grotto rise to even more steeply than the first, causing a majority of the pool to remain in shaded seclusion during all but midday. So just like the other cave behind you, you guys find that this one rises into the openness in the cliffs above you can see that there is a small crevice perhaps three or four feet wide leading into the caverns themselves and there's another watered cavern leaving through another undercut and an exit out to the northwest again this whole cavern is submerged but you can see that the little crevice, it looks to have a trickle of water coming into it, um, but it's so narrow that you would have to probably squeeze in sideways in order to make your way into it. The cavern leading, or the, the little undercut to the northwest, leads out to more of a, or, or you can bring the boat up there, right? Because it's still water, right? It's like a waterway, if you will. Hmm. Would you would you guys want to continue into the to the other? Is there, is there enough is there enough room here that we can beat the out? Uh, you can see that there's a little sandy shelf like right here, right? There's a sandy shelf there, and then it becomes dry. There's a trickle of water that comes out of the crevice into this pool, but it's basically dry. So you could pull the the boat up on the little beachy area right here. Um, it wouldn't be held very well because it's very uh, thin. It's only a couple feet wide. Um, hurt. Maybe uh, spray it to the spray oh, it, spray yeah. it to the wall. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, get the fuck out of the water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we can. It probably more. has an anchor too, right? We could just push the. Uh, anchor my, oh yeah, I might have an anchor. Yeah. Yes, the boat does have an anchor. So just just make sure the anchor is nice and secured. So when we come back this way, we can just get into the boat, or if we have to pull it from the tide moving it around. We can always just pull it back from the anchor. Yeah, I mean anchor it and tie it off in in a way. Yeah, 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 definitely. Unless we want to go to this northwest cavern. Well, I don't want to be pulled back into the water by some. Sea creature. So I hear I wanna, you. I want to be up on the land. We don't know I mean, what's in another cave. Well, it might be our uh, way up. This might be the way up too. That's true. Oceans of water breathing. <laughs> yeah, we need, don't we have. We need one. some. Yeah, we need <laughs> some stuff for sure. Yeah, but uh, but you know, if I'm trying to get. Clear the path and get these slaves out. Okay, that's cool. Um, I mean, if you, you know, if you I mean, we can go. We can go and take a look real quick, but I don't want to. I don't want him pulled back into the water. <laughs> um. Okay. I'm, so you do want to check out the other? You do want to check out the other? Yeah. How you long guys, is he going to be out? <laughs> I'll shake, I'll shake him. And, See it, it takes you maybe four or five minutes of shaking and sort of slapping Zadkiel around, but eventually he comes to the effect of the strange floating eye fish below washing off of him. He sort Have a of nice looks nap. at you confused. <laughs> yeah, I see what y'all were doing. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and to answer your question, uh, Loquacious, um, the the standard rule is any gifted dice must be used during this session. 
unless for some reason they were gifted and they were not able to be used. Like if you guys never have an opportunity to use it in combat or some other reason, then I would carry it over. But typically that's for this session only. All righty. Thank you. Sure. sure. So you guys approach this far floating cavern, if you will. A, a hazy blue sunlight filters into this uneven oval cavern from above, reflecting off the surface of the water, causing ribbons of light to dance upon the walls and ceiling. Every tiny drip and splash of the moving water echoes back, creating a tinkling cacophony. Suddenly, a louder splash erupts from the far end as something roils from the surface. Oh, shit. As this massive giant eel comes splashing out, seeing the front of your boat, looking at the meals that are all sitting on top of it, the eel attacks. We are back into combat. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. I'm just going to use tavern music for our combat tonight because I think it's more fun. <laughs> Let's have a drink. Uh, this is hill. this is ill advised. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking in combat is ill-advised? Is that what you're saying? The combat with the eel is ill-advised. I don't think we have a choice. He wants to eat us. All right. As you guys watch, as this, this massive eel just splashes up out of the water. It's like snapping at whoever's in the boat. And let's go ahead and talk about actions. Uh, talk to me first. I, uh, loquacious. Excellent. Well, DM, this sounds like perfect opportunity for me to remove the eel's head from his body with my halberd. I like it. With your halberd. Zadkiel. I am That's going to uh, protect us from evil and summon my horse. <laughs> <laughs> the horse is in the boat. He's just sitting on top. <laughs> no, um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to... A horse or a holy avenger, you can't have both. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to... Uh, I'm going to strike it as it comes out of the water uh, or as it comes close to us with my... with the wooden sword. Okay. Deglin. I'll hit it with the hammer if it gets close enough. All right, Varus. Long sword to the eyes. All right, so let us... See if uh, all right. I just wanted to check to make sure of anything special I needed to know about said eel. Um, I like Cardman's idea. I should have made it an electric eel. That would have been a little more fun. But that's only <laughs> if you guys are in the water. It's more fun if you're in the water. I think all, all eels right. are electric, actually. Nah, not necessarily. Here we go. As uh, you guys gain the upper hand, Zadkiel, this thing sort of thrashes at the side of the boat, uh, lunging up at you guys out of its little grotto that you guys have disturbed unnecessarily. Go ahead and roll your attack. It has an armor class of six. Zadkiel rolls a 12 plus 16. two. 16, I do believe that hits as an armor class 6, and you are a 5th level, right? You I need am 5th level. You need a 10 or better, so yes, you have struck said creature. Okay. Now leave us alone. <laughs> Just a little. Spank that Large. Eel. It is a large creature. So large, Okay. Roll the 12. Oh, nice. Oh. Boom. Plus your strength, right? Plus. Yes, that 12, 13, 14, plus my strength, which is 15, 16, 17. 17 hit points of damage. Boom. One solid blow. You almost cleave this thing's head from its body. And it decides that it wants no part of that. And it swims back <laughs> into the grotto. <laughs> <laughs> as it wants no part of that whatsoever I tell it in its native tongue to leave us alone <laughs> and your mama too you cannot 
as you guys manage to, in one blow, you guys manage to get rid of it. Back, back to the shore. Back to the shore. Yeah, we don't need anything more to do with that. So All right, so you guys can only go single file through this little crevice, so I'm going to need to know, give me an order that you guys are going to travel through through the tunnel. The Varus with his 10-foot pole is going to check for traps. Uh, Varus, who's next? I, I think it would either be Zadkiel or me. Okay, Zadkiel. I'll go next. Zadkiel, who next? Arthur uh, wants Oasis to can bring oh. up the rear. Okay, so Arthur will go next because he wants to be between the meat shields. So Arthur, and then that would leave Deglin. And yep. then at the bottom, Loquacious. So, uh, gents, I'm noticing it seems as we find a pool that there hat, there is like a protector in each pool. So as we approach another one, if we approach another one, let's be ready to lay scunion before it gets the drop on us. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, uh, as I said, one of the small ingresses into the steep sides of the cove, uh, or I should say at one of the small ingresses into the steep sides of the cove, a narrow cleft in the rock leads back and into darkness, gradually ascending out of the water. You can hear a faint trickle coming from within, as you can see that water up there somewhere, perhaps it's coming down the rocks and then eventually trickling down this trail or down this crevice into the pool. But you can hear this little trickling. Um, as you go, what is Deglin's armor class is seven, right? Deglin? Oh, no, not Deglin, but um, Varus' armor class is three. Is that what you said? Yeah, three. Three or four. Okay. It's three with a thump. Gotcha. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, that's. I think that's going to miss. Close. I need a fifteen, and I rolled a fourteen. So Deglin, oh, Deglin, I keep saying Deglin. Varus, you step out. I'm going to put you, like right here. I'm going to put you guys in order. So here for you. Then it's going to be Zadkiel. That's going to be Arthur. Now it's going to be Deglin. Now obviously, you're not this far away from each other. So this is the order you're going. As soon as you step out of the boat in the sand, oh, you realize that there was a stingray in the water. This thing lashes up and you feel the stinger pelt right into your thigh. But fortunately, it doesn't, it doesn't penetrate and it darts away, fortunately, doing no damage other than leaving a small hole in the thigh of your leather armor. Uh, we're gonna kill that bastard. Yeah, we'll come back. <laughs> I'm, I'm making notes of everything we got to come back and kill. <laughs> Sorry, man. I don't write the shit. I just, like, put you guys through it. <laughs> but, by the way, <laughs> check for traps successful. You found it. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to tie up the belt and uh, get okay. moving on this All right. damn water. <laughs> All right. So, hang on. I'm about to sneeze. Everybody close your ears. Whew. Oh, now my sinuses <laughs> are clear. Man, the salt water gets to you after a while, man, when you're in this place. Yeah. <clears throat> you guys... uh step out of the boat carefully making sure there's no more sand critters around and yeah. Varus begins to leave you guy, lead you guys into the crevice you can see that the crevice twists and turns its way out of sight into darkness fortunately Arthur has a torch lit I need to... fortunately I have information yeah, you have it. Right back at the light. <laughs> yeah. As you move your way, slowly the wetness begins to lead behind, but there still is this trickle of water that comes down, gathered as it runs down the limestone walls from above. So perhaps there's a water above you guys that causes this to drip down, or it could be um, rain or whatever 
precipitation might be pummeling the coast at any one time, gathered and collected and slowly filtering its way down. But the constant, you can hear this constant thrumming sound in the distance of the waterfall cascading over, splashing. It's causing this slight little echo going throughout that sort of mixes with the trickle of the water, giving it this very, I don't know, like well, I'm spooky kind of feeling. I'm listening for non <laughs> sounds of flowing water. <laughs> like tall heat. As you, as you exit, yep, <laughs> as it as it starts to rise up out, it becomes fairly steep angle, almost a 30 degree angle as you guys make your way along the twisty turny. It's dark ahead of you, the light flickering off the walls um, provided by Arthur in the middle of your group. It goes for perhaps 90 or 100 feet or so before it finally opens into a small area. It's pitch black in here as the rock has eventually come over the top of you as opposed to the grotto that you guys were in where you anchored your boat. And the crevice leading up from the cove behind you opens into a chimney-like chamber at least two stories tall. So we're talking 20, 30 feet high at the ceiling. A half a dozen boulders and heaps of scree that crumbled off the chimney walls over the centuries are tumbled across the floor. High above, several large chunks of fallen stone are precariously wedged into a narrow spot in the chute, leaving only a small crawl space into the darkness beyond. You can see the remains of a rope ladder hung from that crawl. So basically what you're looking at is you see that a lot of the walls have crumbled, like the limestone is like broken free, because it got so dry over the years and it just sort of broke free and it causes a big mess in the middle of this chamber that you guys have arrived at. The, uh, let me like put you right here. So everybody can see everybody on the, uh, on the stream. See, okay, good. So anyway, um, so basically what you're looking at, there is no other exit that you can see from this location. But what you see is that there's these huge boulders that are some are on the floor and then probably about 15 feet up or so, you can see there's a couple of more that are like wedged. They call this a chimney because it's like a like straight up like two stories, but there's if you look up there's a couple of rock boulders that are like wedged together and they're like held in place by the walls, right? So it's like somebody wedging themselves in a chimney, if you will, but there's these two massive boulders there and there's some boulders and rocks that are on the floor here. Again, you can't see any exits from here, but you can see the remains of a rope ladder hanging from the crawl above. So where the boulders are wedged up above, you can see that there's the remains of a rope ladder hanging down. The rope ladder itself looks decrepit and old and it's slimy and wet. Um, no telling how long it's been hiding there. A slight trickle of water tumbles down the wall from above, splashing over outcroppings and into tiny pools, creating this echoing gurgle that goes around, uh, that's going on around you guys. So this is a very wet cavern. Some boulders and parts of the walls have chipped and fallen away, causing a rocky floor here, like a, a shale, kind of a crunch under your boots as you sort of step in. And up above about 15 or so feet, um, you can see these boulders wedged. But what's above those, you can't see. The only way you'd be able to see is if you were to climb up the walls. Well, I'm going to take a grapple, tie it to some okay. rope, take it up with me, and uh, see if I can see what's going on. And it doesn't see. look like it's unsteady. Safe. The rocks? The rock, yeah. yeah, they look like they're wedged. You're, you're not sure if they're steady or not. You have to get up there and actually get yeah. on top of them to see. Yeah, well, I'm loafing. Well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Take a look. Well, I'm, yeah. with my mining background, I just want to make sure that we're not going to no, pull yeah, stuff right on top of us. Yeah. Okay. So. 
Uh, how are you going to get up there, Barris? I have five walls. Okay. So <laughs> you go to start to climb the walls and you realize that it's going to be very tricky compared to many other walls because while there are many handholds and whatnot, the wetness of the walls and the slime on the walls are going to significantly reduce your ability to climb. Oh, you, can, you, can, you can climb walls, but you're at a 50% disadvantage. So whatever your oh, climb really? walls is... Whatever your right. climb walls is, you only get half the normal chance. Right. Well, I guess since I can fill on pitons and climb, I just want to make noise, though. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I can give it a try. Let's see. So minus 50%. All right. No, not minus 50. It's, it's, it's not minus 50%. It's at a 50% chance. So whatever your chance is, you get half that. So if you get a hundred percent chance, it's a fifty. If it's a ninety percent chance, it's forty-five, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm at ninety-two. So okay, so to be a forty-six percent chance to climb walls successfully. All right. We could always throw oil on the wall and light it on fire and burn the <laughs> slime off first. Yeah. We do have a question. You get about ten feet up. And one of the handholds crumbles away. And as you reach out to try to grab the wall, it's slippery and you can't, and you end up tumbling back down, suffering three hit points of damage as you land with a oof on the rocks and whatnot below. All right. Well, this is Pitown time then. <laughs> yeah. You also have the potion of levitation, right? Yeah, I was going to say that. Oh, I can try that. Bro. Well, gentlemen, I also can climb walls and fall 20 feet without getting harmed. So perhaps oh, I should fun. give it a try before we do something else. Yeah, sure. Right. Hang in okay. the on the just, rope. Yeah, just take the grappling hook and rope with it. So you can... All right. So what is your percent chance of uh, climb walls, Loquacious? It's 90, so I got a 45. Correct. And the way Discord's been rolling, you should be doing. He rolls a three. <laughs> Without trouble. Nice. So now do it two more times because it's a total of 30 feet climb, once for every 10 feet. I'm actually going to say do it one more time because that was such a good roll. That was another good roll, too. So I'm going to say you did it in two as opposed to three because you rolled so good on that first one. You guys watch as the monk grabbing a hold of the rope, grabbing a hold of the, the pythons or whatever it is that you want to do, slowly works his way, climbs his way nimbly. Um, very impressed you are, Varys, to watch this human sort of jump from rock to rock, climb up above. You climb up, um, it's about a 30-foot climb before you're on top of the rocks, uh, loquacious. Um, you can see that the chimney that you guys are in that is divided in half by these two boulders that are wedged um, in the crevice. What happened here? That's bizarre. Um, you can see that there is another 40 feet on top of that before it's the cap of the roof area. Um, the light from below barely filters up from... Arthur's light, but it is enough for you to see the roof. The chimney chamber continues up perhaps another 40 feet. Here, you can see water running down the walls on all sides, dripping steadily off numerous stalactites descending from the ceiling. Wedged against one wall, covered in a thick layer of slime from years of exposure to moisture, sits an iron, rusty chest. You can also see, I should say, that there is uh, a small crevice leading off from up here into the limestone. So, so when you out. say crevice, like a tunnel that we could... Yeah, enter? the same thing. Yeah, the same thing you guys have been in. It's a very narrow sort of... Sometimes you have to turn yourself sideways and sometimes you have to like stoop down. Um, but it's, and it's... So it's very narrow, twisting natural pathways. All right, well, I'm going to tie off DM so that the rest of the party can make their way up here. Okay. 
So you guys all manage to eventually climb and you can see exactly, um, as I said to, uh, um, to, uh, loquacious, the roof overhead extends another 40 feet. Um, you can see that there is a hole, a crevice like hole in the wall. It's up actually a couple feet up off of the floor leading to the south. Um, but right, like right where Loquacious is standing right now, there is a chest of some kind. It's an old rusty iron chest. Uh, take a look at it. As you guys approach, you hear a Let's chittering sound. You hear a chittering sound. And suddenly uh, flying, flying out of a small little cave in the overhead, these small bird-like creatures with these big, huge, long beaks come swooping down on top of the party. Great. As strangers. we once again enter into combat. Surprise, strangers. Like Let's this. go ahead with our Varus action. Um, avoid them and, uh... <laughs> Run into the well, stab them. I guess sword. Okay, long sword. All right, Take. run away, run away. Zed kill. Yes, I'm going to uh, going to charge the first bird thing. You don't really have to charge. There's no really room to move around here. It's only about twenty feet wide. Okay. Um, so, yeah, each one of these squares is 10 feet. So this area is only like 20 feet across, maybe 15 feet wide or so. So All there's right, really not that up. much space to have to charge. I'll swing at it. All right. This is going to be great. <laughs> I can almost stab it and not swing at it. Don't want to gotcha. hit my partner. Daglin, too late. You said swing. Oh, great. <laughs> He's going to swing with his Holy Avenger and his, his mount. Oh, great. <laughs> so I want to get decapitated and trampled. Wonderful. Right. Deglin. <laughs> I'm going to try to, if anything comes near me, I'm going to try to smash it with the shield, actually. Okay. Press it up against the wall, you know, and crush gotcha. it. Loquacious. Well, Dean, this is a perfect opportunity to impale one of these flying creatures on the end of my spear. On the end of your spear. Got it. Well, halberd, I mean. Oh, your halberd. Even better. The pokey bit. Yeah, the pokey bit. Gotcha. All right. As these creatures are identified and you do realize, yes, they are in fact Sturges as we begin our combat. And it is a tie, so let's roll the game. That's another tie. Let's roll the game. Hey, looks like the Sturges get to go first. All right, so... This creature swoops down. This one is going to attack Varus. Uh, first attack is at a plus two to hit. Got it. Why is it not going to go? Okay, here we go. So it's going to get a beak situation modifier. Two, and we roll. Nineteen. Nice job. As you suffer one hit point of damage as the the creature snatches into you and latches onto Varus as this needle-like beak pierces right in. It goes right through your armor, right into your upper shoulder blade as the stinging pain hits in as it launches it clamps its claws down onto your armor, latching on like a leech, and begins draining your life-giving blood from you. But you initially take one hit point of damage. So we're taking like two now? Uh, yes. Yeah, so previously okay. from the other one, yes. So I'm 32 then. Alright. Okay. As this Sturge comes swooping down onto Arthur Cedarand. 
as it also gets a plus two on its first attack. And he gets a, I think, let me double check their hit die. Oh yeah, they're four hit die creatures. Wait, are Sturges four hit die? That doesn't make sense. I think I copied these from another creature and I forgot to change. Let me look really quick for Sturges because I don't think they're a four hit die. If they are. I think they're just like a one. Not even in 5e yeah. or they are four hit die. <laughs> yeah, well, back in the day they were badass, so just let me have my fun. <laughs> yeah, when they swarmed you. Well, they're, they're, bad, <laughs> they're badass in 5e. I took the whole yeah. party out with them. Yep. Uh, hit die one plus one. So yeah. Me, yep, so I just have to remember that. So it got a... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Sorry, it got a 12 to hit him. So one plus one against armor class nine. Yeah, it only needs a nine to hit him. So it needed a nine to hit him. So Arthur suffers six hit points of damage. And this creature is latched onto Arthur as well. This Sturge comes flying in, attacking Deglin, which it's never going to hit him, but you never know. <laughs> You never know. Pecking it's, at my armor. It's this, like a woodpecker. It's, this, it's, this beak <laughs> it's like the, the coyote running into a side of a... Oh, look, there's a cave tunnel going through that. Oh, no. Beep, beep. <laughs> Just oh, that runner. Beep, beep. Yep. 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 Uh, seven as the Sturge uh, tries to attack but misses. As the last one comes in and attacks... Oops. I need to move the... Uh, I need to move them. So he went... And now he is going as he attacks Loquacious. Loquacious, you're the DM, considering how long my halberd is, do I have a chance of impaling it before it hits me? Uh, no. Uh, 13? What? Yeah, your armor class is 7, right? Correct. Uh, armor class 7. Needed an 11 to hit you, so a 13 hits, and you suffer... Three hit points of damage, and this one is locked onto you as well. So you will be unable to use your halberd to attack it. However, Arthur grabs his dagger and stabs fiercely at the creature that is on him. So hopefully, he will be able to... Dagger. Oh. <laughs> As Arthur's like, damn it. As he misses with his dagger. Deglin. Um, can I see the one that's on Requaitus? Yes, you can see all of them. All you got. You can see all of them as they've all like latched themselves onto your comrades. All right, can I just reach out with my other hand and grab it and squish it like a bug? It would be it would so this would be you would have to do an attack to hit it. Um and unfortunately they don't I don't think there's really any rules about like yanking sturges off. I don't think there's any like strength check or anything like that. I think it's like and they either give up and say screw this, I'm out of here or they die. Right? Okay. So that said, it would be a uh, basically an open hand attack so it would be your attack um i don't do i want to say strength um yeah i'll give you your i'll give you your strength to hit and your strength damage if you hit um just, just hammer it just hammer yeah, it just hammer it yeah just <laughs> smash the crap out of it <laughs> but uh i would say that uh, you would have to hit it as an armor class um their armor class is Sepsi. I don't know. Is there a... Uh, yeah, that's automatic. Plus two. Yeah, there's no real rule against, right? So you would just have to basically hit it and then do damage to it. And then I would say your damage is going to be um, just like a like a, an open hand attack, right? So um, okay. I think... I think open hands are normally like a die die three of damage or something like that plus your strength. So, okay, so I'll just I'll just go with that. That's what I was gonna do. And I'll just snap its little neck or something. Right. If I can hit it. 
Yeah, so uh, they're go. not that hard to hit. Oh yeah, I hit it. And then um, you said a die three. Yeah. So I'll just do three. one die one die four minus one. Minus one. Plus your but strength. Plus eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, see, it does here. It I says do. special attack is a four hit die creature after successfully. Yeah, see? That's what I thought. So I'm just going to add plus seven since it's negative. Okay. Here we go. You grab a hold of it, squeeze with your hand, and yank back, scr literally crushing this thing under your hand um, as it, like, screeches for a second and then, like, pops like a bloody zit in your hand and... <laughs> The blood, the blood that it was, the blood that it was sucking out of Loquacious sort of squirts out all over you, and it leaves this little hole um, in his in his chest area where this thing buried itself in. Um, we'll have to it. patch that up. We don't need you leaking everywhere. <laughs> yep. All right, Loquacious. There is no longer one on you. However, you can see the one flitting uh, that's stuck on Arthur. As well as there is one stuck on Varus, and there's another one flitting around you guys. It's it has yet to uh, has yet to attack. All right, DM. That sounds like a perfect time. Instead of the halberd, it's going to be the fist. Okay. And I'll go for the one on Varus. Okay. Now, as I have five every four, do you get your extra in the first round or the fourth round in your? I pick? always, I always do it at the the last round, so the fourth round. Okie dokie. You just have to keep track. Twelve as against armor class seven, so fifth level monk. Um, fifth level. I would hit it as a cleric. Yeah, fifth level monk. He needs a thirteen to hit armor class seven. No, I'm sorry. He needs an eleven to hit armor class seven. So that twelve hits. So go ahead and do thy damage. Do your worst. Six. Nicely done. So, in honor and homage to the cleric who has just reached out and snatched that little bugger off you and popped it, you too went off to the one that was on Varus, as Varus is like bringing his dagger, trying to struggle to get it away. He can't quite get the angle. You reach, grab a hold of it, and crush it. Just like the other one. And fortunately, it, it frees. Or, or it, it uh, you, you manage to yank it off and crush it um, uh, before it has a chance to fly away. Varus. All right, so he got the one off me. Got the one off you. So there's one on Arthur, and there's still one flitting in the air right now. And it's not really oh. where, not really here. It tried to attack Deglin and missed, and now it's sort of zoomed off in the air. I'm going to try and stab the one on Arthur. Okay. Thirteen. That hit armor class seven. Yes, it does. Go ahead and roll your damage. They're nice small. Uh, yeah, I would say they're small creatures. Three hit points of damage. You manage to cut the thing, but it doesn't. Ma it doesn't kill it, and unfortunately, it is still stuck on Arthur. Zadkiel, you're up. Dad kill. That would be you, monkey. Yeah. I tell the uh there's there's how many sturges left? What? Two what? Can you there's hear me? one there's one on on Arthur and there's one still flying around. Yeah. Um what is the I mean, can I still hit it without hitting my my um companion? Uh yeah. Yeah, it depends on what you hit him with. If you hit him with a sword, then no. If you're going to, like, stab him with a dagger or reach out and grab it with your hands, then yes. Um, 
so they're all attached. No, there's only one attached. One's attached to Arthur. The other. That one's not attached, right there, by me. Then. Right, it's flying around. It's not really by right. you. It's like up in the air, like twenty feet up or so. Okay, it, I'm it, going it, to attack it then. The free one. Uh, and I tell what the Sturges. Gonna, what are you going to attack it with? My sword. You can't reach it. It's like ten or twenty feet above you. Oh yeah, I'll hit it with a sling. You have a sling. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and roll the hit. I tell the Sturges, you know, I warn them. I don't know if they communicate. Stay away! This isn't North Dakota. Oh my god. I hit it. <laughs> Pretty sure that's Sturgis, but that just could be me. 15 hits! I don't know what's the armor class. Armor class 7? Yes, I need a 9. 15 hits! Okay. Roll, roll your damage. I think you're one to five. If you oh. were to use your character sheet, it would show you. No, it's not on there. I didn't put it on there. I just have the bullets. I didn't put the damage on there. Okay. I'm looking right now. I'm on the page. Okay. All right. Slings do like 1d3, right? Sling bullets. Bullet sling. Sling bullet does 2 to 5 against small. So 1d4 plus 1. You can do it, monkey. We we know you can do it. Sad Gil has the power. Oh no, so close. As you peg it, send it reeling, screeching, slamming into the rock, and it goes tumbling down, almost landing on the floor before it catches itself and begins to flit away as the other one continues to suck on Arthur. So question, does my dex have a bonus on that damage? No. Or range with it now? Okay. No, you can you get the the dexterity, you'll get your like a range um addition to your attack, but not damage. Alright, as we go to round two, as we roll eh, it's not Arthur's turn yet. We have to roll the dice. Let's go. As you guys get as Arthur tries to stab this thing with his dagger once again. Going to dagger melee roll. Oh, he got yes. It. <laughs> As he hits it, just want to double check to make sure because this one doesn't follow A, D, and D one E very good. Um, he rolled a fifteen, right? Is that what it, was? That what it showed? Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, so you only needed a 14. Look at him. Dagger wielding son of a gun. I have to move Arthur because I can't get to the bird. Oh, so close. He only did one hit point of damage, though. He did one hit point, so he's got it. All right. Oh, his name wasn't magical. So he has one of those. Uh, uh, you know what? I think you're right. I forgot. Let me double check. Thank you for I mean, reminding I, me. I mean, I, I have a simple one. No, but oh, he yeah, has one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he doesn't. It doesn't show it in here, but I know he had a plus two dagger. So, but I am going to say that it's not on his character sheet. So I can't confirm that or deny that. So, so we'll just leave it stuck to his chest, sucking the lifeblood out of him. All right, Deglin, you can I'm see the one flitting around, and there's one still attached to Arthur. I'm going to go for the one that's on Arthur and do the same thing I did with Luke. Okay. Keep wanting to call him Locutus of Borg. <laughs> 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 Loquacious. 
All right, so roll to attack. That is hilarious. I am Lukutu Saborg. 18 yeah, hits. So, and then we said. Don't even bother rolling damage. Why are you okay. even rolling damage, dude? <laughs> it only had one hit point left. All right. Loquacious. You can see the bird creature flitting around maybe 15 feet above your head. Not quite in range of your halberd. That's you all a... right. Perfect opportunity for me to show these guys what I can do with a light crossbow. All right. <laughs> awesome. Oh, you had a crossbow? We could have shot those floating eye things. Uh, the water was too deep because they were like 20 feet down. Oh, I would say that the crossbow would lose in so much momentum that it wouldn't reach yeah. all the way down. It's like a bullet it'll shear. Yeah. I hear you. All right. Go ahead and roll your attack then for your light crossbow. That's not successful. Oh, no. Oh, I forgot that you're on there. Let's see. Oh, a three. Yeah. Pretty sure that that is not going to do it. So you try to aim, but the bird is just too nimble and dexterous for you. Varus, you're up. Can I reach it with my sword? No, it's about 15 feet up. Well, now I will throw it down here with All my right. other hand. Okay. And me. I will throw a magic dagger. Ooh, even better. As the magic dagger shatters on the magic walls. Oh, sorry. Put my shield above my head. <laughs> I want that shit yes. coming down on top of me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 12, I believe that hits. Uh, yep, 12 just hits. Alright. D4. QD, that's D4 plus. Nicely done. As you manage to take out the final Sturge. Take my dagger back. <laughs> Yep, as it comes tumbling down on top of your party friends. <laughs> nah, as the bird comes tumbling down on top of your party friends. All right, who needs healing? I think uh, uh, Lequ right. uh, Lequacious and uh, Arthur both got hit. Uh, yeah. Oh, Barrett got hit too. Uh, I'm down six, my man. I could probably do a Cure Light Wounds on him. Yeah, Arthur is down six as well. Wow. Um, let me. Who's lower? Uh, Arthur has sixteen. Yeah, Arthur is the weaker one. Uh, I've got eleven. Oh, all right. Well, I get my hands. Oh yeah, you yeah. I forgot it. You got that. You want to do uh, Quasius, and I'll do our. Yep, we can do that. So you are fifth level now, Paladin. So that's ten hit points that you're able to heal for Loquacious, right? Yep. All right, Loquacious, you have healed ten hit points. I put my hands on Loquacious and say, "Stay, stay steady, son." And I heal him. And he is back to seventeen. All right, and then I'm gonna cast Cure Light Wounds on our. Okay. Is that two die four or is it one die eight? Here, back in a drink. All right, um, a Cure Light Wound spell is a die eight. Six oh. back. That's good. Perfect. That's exactly where it needs to be. Cool. Back up to his max. I'll mark All right. Sheet. Very nicely done. As you guys are once again examining this... Uh, chest or whatever it's a it's a rusty iron chest uh look for traps see if okay. i can open it go ahead and check has it been opened it um open? no it looks like it's it's locked and it's old and rusty all right so i'm so gonna impose, i'm gonna impose a five percent um penalty on trying to pick the lock but go ahead and search well, for chaps first well, yeah i'm looking for traps Yep, go ahead and search for traps. Uh, 
Oh, that's successful. So you, as you examine it, you find that there is a needle trap on it. However, you discover that the needle and anything in it is long since rusted and dried up. So it is probably an ineffective trap, but there is a trap. All right. Well, and, you know, remove it then. And, uh, and then unlock it. Okay. Go ahead and roll for open locks. Easy. You try, but the lock is just way too rusted to pick. Yeah. Hammer time. Hammer time. <laughs> Two quick slams with your hammer easily smash open this chest. Inside, you see a pile of gold spill out, as well as six moonstones, a potion, and a scroll case made of bone sealed in wax. Mm. Somebody write that down. Uh, or what should I? Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> All right. So how much gold? It's a weird number. Four hundred and eighty-nine gold coins. Mm -hmm. All right. Six, Seven. six Seven. moon moonstone gems. Okay. A potion. Potion. And a scroll, a bone scroll tube sealed in wax. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, um, can I hit the value of the stuff of the gems? 50 gold apiece. Nice. From the pirate booty. <laughs> I get. Quite possibly. Um, do you want to break the seal on the, on the scroll? Uh, most scrolls are probably magic. So are well, it might be a map, but it should be a spell scroll or something. Oh, yeah. I, I do have, uh, green, green languages at 30% if it's something odd. <laughs> it's up to you. Or just toss it into the uh, bag of holding. Yeah, we'll just there. toss it in the bag of holding for now. Though. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Sort it all out later. Right. For everybody hanging out there and chat with us, we definitely appreciate it. So as you guys look around, as I said, there is a crevice hole leading out of here, but I actually lied to you before. It's not a couple of feet up. It's a couple of feet from the roof. So the ceiling is about another 40 feet up and oh, about 10 feet from the top of the ceiling you can see this exit crevice leading out huh. so it looks like we need to climb again is that what you're saying dm i'm uh, thinking that's what we're saying well now that we're all up here we can just change the gravel hook and move it up <laughs> yeah well somebody can Climb up. I, I think as you're climbing up, you should go ahead and hammer in a couple of pitons. Yeah, um, might as well. Yeah. That that way, if you do fall, you'll you only fall the however distant it is between the pitons. Yeah, that's probably good. So, okay. So the okay. same rules apply here as they did below, All because right. because there's water spilling out of the crevice, running down the walls, causing the walls to be wet and slimy. I'll just peek on and climb up then. All right. Okay. I am going to need three successful climb Sorry, walls. How? Ten feet. Oh. Ten feet per. Ten feet per stretch. It's that far up. It's, it's yeah. The ceiling itself is forty feet up. The hole itself is about thirty feet up. Jesus Christ! All right. Yeah, it's covered with fudge and has fudge stripe on one side. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're talking cookies. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about fudge lining the walls. I was like, oh, that'd be kind of cool. Let's eat all the fudge, and then we don't have to worry about being slippery and slimy. Where are we at? Willy Wonka's? Yeah, Nicely done. <laughs> Nicely done. As you get up there about 10 feet, tying in the python, making sure that the rope is there. Another 10 feet up, 
another python. And just under the wire as you make Ooh. the final 10 feet. Oh, plus, <laughs> plus 100 experience points for the party. Take note of that right. as hey. you manage to right. successfully climb the slippery, slimy walls, laying pythons in as you go. The limestone seems like it'll hold, although there are bits and places around here where you could see the limestone has broken off. As you're up there, Varus, just to give you sort of the bird's eye view, a slow but steady flow of water trickles out of this small opening in the wall, tucked behind two large stalactites near the ceiling. There's enough room to squeeze and crawl through the tunnel, which slopes gently upward out of sight. So you are not going to be able to walk through this tunnel. You will have to crawl on hands and knees as you That's continue right. your way through there. Oh, uh I want to secure that gravel hook so we okay. can climb, the, so we can get back down. <laughs> okay. Between the pitons and the yeah, and the gravel hook without any issue. And then gotcha. I will, uh, you know, take my ten foot pole and put it first. All right. So I can clear the way as I go. Awesome. <laughs> as you guys watch, you see Varus quickly working, securing the rope, securing the pythons, getting his pole ready to sort of poke ahead as best as he possibly can. He drops the rope down below, giving you guys all access to climb up the walls, climb up uh, using the pythons as leverage to bring yourself up to this small little crevice up above. And that's where we are going to take our break. I like appreciate everybody that's been hanging out with us. Um, as always, you know that this is typically where we go into our break time. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let me uh, Let me see if I can get our... Wow, why is it not showing? That's kind of weird. Oh, that's why. It's weird that it's not showing SoundCloud for Monkey. What's up with that? What's wrong? The uh, SoundCloud, it's not loading for me. Uh -oh. like, is my interwebs down? No. SoundCloud. Now what? How do we get Monkey's music? I want Monkey's music. So anyway, I appreciate everybody that's been hanging out with us. Uh, like I said, this is typically where we... What the heck, monkey? What the hey? Is there something that I did wrong? Did you like get mad at me and deny me access? Is SoundCloud down? This is like really weird. What's up? <clears throat> so why can't I get to it? Okay, so let me try this. Let me go back. I'm going to go back to in-game. And yeah. then what I'm going to do... Hang on just a sec. And then I'm going to go here. Yeah, see, it loaded this time. It's just maybe I just went, like, too fast. All right, and we want to... Yeah, see, it's it's loading, but it's, like, not loading. There, I sent you the link. Huh? I sent you a direct link. And that directly don't load that it's a connection issue you're having. Yeah. Well, that's why. That's I okay. I can sing. Oh, that's exactly oh. what we all want to hear. Danny boy. Ooh, no, that's oh, not I love one. Danny boy. All right, so I'm going to try. There we go. We lost our audience. Thank you, folks. Yep. <laughs> Everybody's gone. All right. Throwing so. virtual tomatoes. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's something with, uh, with, uh, it's like it won't let me interact with it. It won't play it. I don't know what's going on. But we're going to take a 15 minute break anyway, and I'm just going to. All right. Go ahead That's and move okay. it over. Yeah, I really wish I could tell you what's going Ooh, on, but... Think quick so, save. Yep, so I said you can see it. <clears throat> yeah, plus 100. Oh, nat 1 for singing. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> so, I guess... Yeah, man. I'm I angry. Really, <laughs> the guy. I, I don't know... I don't know why it's not, like, allowing me to, to do anything with it, dude. 
Seriously. But we'll be back in about 15 minutes. So it's 9.30 now. We'll be back at 9.45. I apologize for the lack of... Of... Uh, entertainment. Entertainment during our break. Drink. Yes, which kind of bugs me. So... I'll, I'll tell a couple gonna, jokes. I'll put the <laughs> timer on there. Oh, crud. Man, see, I am screwing everything up, man. It's just killing me. So anyway, we'll be back in about 15 minutes. I set yeah. the timer for 15 minutes, and then I close the timer. <laughs> Why I'm is it not good to play poker in the jungle? Why not? Because there's a bunch of cheetahs. Oh, my God. You're such a tard. Here, here's a joke. Here's a joke. <laughs> a sailor walks past the bar. <laughs> That's a big ass joke. Monkey's such a turd, man. I don't. <laughs> Your jokes kill me, literally. Please stop. Um, yeah, dude. I don't. I don't know what's going on, but it's. Uh, it's like I. I change the. Uh, I change the link to it, and it won't let me do like anything. It's really bizarre. I'm going to cry now because I love Monkey's music. But anyway, so for those of you that are, are going to hang out, like I said, give us 15 minutes. That gives us time to reload, bio breaks, all the other good stuff. We'll be back at 945. Hopefully you'll hang out with us for the for the rest of the game, see where the party continues as they make their way through these caves, trying to find a means of helping the slaves to exit the city um, and we'll see what goes on from there so we'll be back in a few minutes and in the meantime I am going to try to find I'm gonna go and get my other link to uh, I wonder if it'll let me run two version two instances of OBS at once that'd be kind of funny huh I don't think it will anyway um, we'll be back in a few minutes I really hate not having music too
Hey, Gomer, man. I'm sorry I missed that. Appreciate you, uh, you hanging up, man. Sorry I missed that. Not TPK cookies, it's TP cookies. This is really, really disappointing. I'm going to have to revert to my 5th uh, edition version of music, or I uh, should say uh, intermission music. It's kind of... Very disappointed in SoundCloud right now. For those that use it. But hopefully some of you will be still hanging out with us after the fact. As if we'll be back in a few minutes because SoundCloud's being a turd. I think Monkey just killed our access is what it was. He said, here, get all this free cool music for your stream. What happened? I'm blaming you that SoundCloud won't let me play your music. Oh, no, nah, it's working. I don't know. Yeah, I got rid of it. And I just think, I wonder if there's something blocking some, somewhere. I don't know. I, I wish I could answer. But even when I go to interact with it, it's like it won't, it won't fully load and I can't click on anything. It's like. So they get clear your cash. Well, that's what I did yeah. uh, when, I, when I went to it. And... Did you try just on a regular, without posting, just regular browser? Yeah, it loads there. It's something in the OBS that's not. Yeah. It's like I refresh the cache right there, and then it, but it just it doesn't load anything. It's, I don't know why. 1.3 gigawatts of the... Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Stupid SoundCloud. Freaking idiot SoundCloud. <laughs> Gosh. That's okay. I just like having the music because I just, I hate sitting here where we're not doing anything. I like to have at least a little music playing in the background for folks, but. No, hold on. I got, I got the solution. <laughs> there we go there we go for those that are following don't forget if you had not clicked the follow button please do so trying to grow our brand here we're we're getting close to our 200 goal slowly but surely we're working our way up the charts not quite there yet but we will get there Yeah, see, it loads right up. There it is. Yeah, but it's not playing. You hit random. I I can't click anything on the on the uh, interact. It won't let me do anything. Mm. Well, like I said, I get to the website and I and I got the link for there, but it's mm. 
Hear that? No. Can anybody hear that coming down the stream? Just want to make, just want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Just because it, it'll let me play it like from SoundCloud, but I'm playing it through my desktop, so you guys should be able to hear the music there. But it's not playing it through the the widget that I dropped on the page, which is freaking stupid. Yeah, the widget's probably uh, got an issue with some of the uh, components of the music. So. Hello. With the note. Adjust it so it's not too blazingly loud. Thanks, man. And this is actually, uh, Monkey Boogers, he actually did all this stuff, man. This is all his page, his own music. Appreciate everybody hanging out with us. Hey, quick save. Who was that Nat one for? Was that for the party? I, I think it was for the singing. Oh, that's right. Got you. So the that's party now has, <clears throat> yeah, party has two Nat ones and a Nat twenty now. Uh-oh. 
All right, let's try to bring this thing back down to reality. As much as we can call this game real. <laughs> Here we go. And Dweez is back. Why? Because that's what we do. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Parentland Adventures 1E One Shots. I am Sean, your host, <clears throat> with all the infamous Greyhawk warriors gathered around me. I appreciate everybody that hung out there with us. Um, as always, if you have not clicked that follow button, please do so. If you would like to subscribe, even better. Every dime we make goes right back into the channel. And we're thinking about uh, doing a charity event so we can get Loquacious some uh, some new hardware for his, for his house so he can actually play the game for real instead of having to roll dice on Discord. Because that's what we do around here. We take care of our folks. But uh, yeah, man, appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, hopefully you'll stay till the end and uh, be able to see see what transpires. So, ooh, natural Perfect. 20. Thank Thanks, you, card, man. They're going to need another one. That's like two nat 20s they got. So everybody's saying, fuck the DM. Let's give all the players stuff, man. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, you were about to kill us with some bubble the fish. What the heck is all that about? <laughs> <laughs> Not my fault y'all can't are going to be going on a boy. I want to put on all my plate armor and all my other cool swag. And then I'm going to get in a boat. I'm going to make sure that it's a boat in, in over the head water. So if I fall in, I will swim like an anchor. Then we encounter the three eyed fish from the Simpsons. and we'll just kill <laughs> I didn't tell you to look at them. Did not tell you to look at them. Hey, we survived. We survived. Yes, we did. Time to do uh, some trolling. What's that? Time to do a little trolling. Just yes, <laughs> sir. Sure. All fish diet. <laughs> so, as I said, you guys are uh, have climbed the top up here and begun working your way through this twisty, turny little crawl space. Um, for those of you that are claustrophobic, this is, this is not a good place to be, but for those that are okay with it, it's not so bad. It's just wet and slimy. The floor itself slopes downwards. Um, so the trickle of water that's been filtering through like down out of the limestone walls and onto the, fl uh, onto the, to the floor of this little crawl tunnel, um, leaking down around the edges or down the sides, forming little limestone trails, um, or wet slimy trails, I mean, as it goes down, sloping, and then it sort of cascades out of the mouth where you guys are crawling in. Not like a waterfall, but just like a trickle of water on both sides as it seeps out and coats the walls that you guys are trying to climb. But it's a slow but steady flow of water. Um, and like I said, there's enough room to squeeze through and crawl into the tunnel which slopes gently upward out of sight. And upward's always nice because that tends to mean that the water will pool behind you as opposed to in front of you. Um, it You can see uh, or, or the, the, the tunnel that you're in that Varus kind of leads you guys probably goes for, and I'm going to, oops, I'm going to put you guys in the same order that you said you were going to go before. Um, does that look acceptable to you guys? Varus, Zadkiel, Arthur, Deglin, yeah, followed by so Loquacious. Yeah. Okay. So the, um, the tunnel that you're in continues to twist, turn. Um, some places uh, is a little more headroom than others. Others times in a couple places, you'll actually almost have to get on your belly in order to scrooge through but eventually um, it opens into a, a large chamber. Um, it's a drop of about five feet, not quite five feet from the tunnel that you're crawling out of to the floor of the cave that you see beyond you. The tunnel emerges about three or so feet above the earthen floor of a large round cavern filled with stalactites and stalagmites. The temperature in here has become noticeably warmer and a humid, earthy smell hangs in the air. Beyond the mouth of the cavern, a narrower passage leads around a turn where a faint phosphorescent glow uh, emerges. So over here, you can see that there is an exit and there is a faint phosphorescent glow coming from this area. 
I'd like to find down and uh, move like to here. Okay. And keep an eye out for trouble. Okay. Eye and ear. <laughs> okay. So you guys, so Varus sort of hops down. Um, the floor itself is <gasps> covered in mud. Um, but it's dry, feels like dry mud, but it's sort of spongy a little bit as you sort of land on it, Varus. Um, and so Zadkiel begins coming out behind Varus as Varus moves south. I, um, I, I caution Zadkiel for a minute. Yeah. Because he's in heavy armor. Right. So I'm going um, to poke the 10 foot pole mm -hmm. around a little more and make sure okay. it's solid before so, I go injured. Yep. So as soon as you go to move, your 10-foot pole right in front of you goes, it, it literally, the, the, the crusty covering of the room sort of gives way and your pole bursts through the floor and it goes down probably not quite 10 feet before you hit some kind of a solid foundation. Around the edges next to you, you find that it's about two feet deep because as you take that first step to prod, suddenly you sink in and as you sort of scramble to stop yourself you find that right there at the edge where you're standing it's about two feet deep but out in front of you toward the center of the room it literally gets to be like seven or eight feet almost ten feet deep all right um i think we ought to hope another gravel hook in case we have to climb back up here um, so it's it's only like three foot down yeah well i mean if i didn't know if it might all collapse um oh i see what you're saying yeah i'm i'm worried about like the heavy armored people walking on it <laughs> gotcha um, well if we stick to the walls we... yeah maybe um you could hang, it... we could all tie ourselves off with ropes Slips down into the deep stuff with pulling. And just we might have to, might have to climb back up this way again. Let's see. All right. Um, I'm gonna like proceed carefully. Okay. Go ahead. The and okay. Check you you. Everything. Okay. So as you scooch around, you find that indeed along the edge where you're walking, it's very slow going as you're it's like getting deep into a thick mud and then having to pull your feet out and step another step but it's only about two feet deep so it only gets up to maybe your knees or so but makes it very slow going as you're lodge slodge takes you about 10 minutes to get along the edge but eventually you get to here where you see that it becomes much firmer and you can see there's a small trail or, or, or river of, not really a river, but it's like a stream of water running from right to left. Um, and in the distance off to the left, you can hear the sound of a waterfall. Um, mm -hmm. But it's much firmer here, although it is wetness sort of seeping in here. And you can see that for whatever reason, the the upper part kind of, because of the warmth and the wetness and everything um, sort of dried over here, but it the sludginess underneath is caused by the water seeping underneath into the beyond. So it forms like a muddy pool underneath. And if you break through the crust, you're going to sink into a, uh, a pool of mud that's however deep, you're not sure. Um, I, I suggest uh, Arthur or someone mark this path for the I future got, slave freedom I got, <laughs> idea. I got chalk. I got chalk yeah. so we can yeah. put X's on it. Yeah. Okay. That way we don't forget either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we come back this way, if we have to. And, uh, all right. So I'm going to step out here and carefully keep watch. Okay. Or am I kind of 
We can't stay here. Okay. We're all tied off. Everybody falls. Okay. All right. As I said, you guys get here, and you can see that there, there's a tunnel running to the left and to the right, but there's a small stream. Um, it sort of slopes down to the right slightly, um, but it doesn't. it's not a very steep slope, right? But it's just right. enough to cause the trail of water to move off to the left. Well, we know there's a waterfall back this way, so we probably want to go this way. Yeah, going you, to the right. That's what. Yeah, left on the screen, right to our characters. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unless we want to go over a waterfall. All right. So actually, I forgot to add something into this chamber. So I want to do it just because I like it. Give me just a second. Can't believe I forgot this. This is one of my favorite things to do. Okay. <laughs> this so you guys begin to step in um, and you can see there's this massive massive chamber um, there we go you guys move into this this uh, massive chamber illuminated everywhere by a soft I have purple, but it's sort of a bluish green glow of phosphorescent fungi partitioned with stalagmites, stalactites, and columns of stone. The place is a haven for mushrooms, toadstools, and countless other fungal growths. From the smallest patches of lichen to the largest mushrooms towering above the floor, every imaginable spore fills the whole uneven chamber. Um, the ceiling itself is probably 40 or 50 feet overhead as you guys sort of move your way along the walls following the, the water trail. I would like to uh, cover my mouth and my nose. Okay. Because I'm paranoid about inhaling uh, something poisonous. All right. So, again, uh, over here you can see there's stalactites and stalagmites. Over in front of you there's stalactites and stalagmites. But basically the entire place is illuminated um, with um, sort of this bluish green kind of fungi color. Boy, that's just way... Does it, does it look like it goes up this way and down this way? Yes. All right. So, so, so I want to go up. <laughs> so, yeah, so I said, so where you guys are... Um, it, it sort of slopes it sort of slopes downward that's why the uh, um, that's why the the water runs back down toward where you know the waterfall is mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. again you begin to move up um, the phosphorescent light um, is enough that Arthur just turns off his um, turns off his uh, light source because it's light enough in here that you don't need the torch. So he extinguishes his torch as you guys arrive. Um, like I said, um, the, uh, the chamber is just mushrooms galore growing everywhere in all different sizes. Some almost as tall as you, others are just like lichens on the wall, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. DM, before we take a, shot and some monster comes sneaking out of the wood line why do you even just consider that i would do that to you shadows guys? real quickly all right go ahead and give me your hide in shadows check my wannabe thief 
the action too. Where's this character? So you can't see him? No. It's He's refresh. A, yeah, you're probably out there fresh a page, yeah. I hate that, that I have to do that, but unfortunately, sometimes it just kind of dies out on us. Missed it by three. Oh, so close. You feel that you are well hiding in the shadows. Can't nobody see you, man. You are as, you're so hiding in the shadows, you might as well be in the walls themselves. That's how that's how good you feel about uh, hiding right now. It's only a Jack Black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What the hell? All right. Hang on just a second. I apologize, folks. This has really bothered me. So hang on a second. I'm going to go find out why my man is getting hammered by. Do -do -do. I apologize. I'm just trying to see why the messages are getting hammered by him and why is it not letting me... Yeah, I haven't uttered even anything close to a bad word. Yeah, it's not. Well, it's not letting me catch him either. I know. That's kind of weird. Uh, let's see. Not even giving me a chance to, to do anything. Yeah, well, I was just looking to see... Timed out by stream Ellen. So here, I want to wonder if this is going to move this one. This one, this one, remove. I'm wondering if Ian's computer's just old enough or something that systems looking at it and like it shouldn't it should not <laughs> it should not at all and i am really frustrated that it would be doing that to him because i'm like what is he running an old 386 or something eh, get trash 84 <laughs> yeah there you go 2009 macbook <laughs> yes that's all actually right. not that old well yeah so i do apologize um and I, we will get this figured out. Um, but right now, if I see you get bounced, then I'm going to undo it because that's just stupid. So for those of you that are out there, I appreciate you hanging with me. So let's get back to business. Um, I just happened to glance over and said, oh, 16 messages were deleted by? Well, the heck with you. So, all right. Anyway, let's back, get, get back to it. So as I said, you guys step in and there's sort of this a glow about the place um, of all the lichen and stuff on there and there's mushrooms growing and the floor itself is is thick with mush and muck and fertilizer if you will um everybody give me an intelligence check please just roll a d20 and compare it to why, your intelligence why do you always do the intelligence because that's my lowest stat. that's why i do it <laughs> i run this game purposefully to screw with the i'm a i'm as dumb as a boxer <laughs> And this is for Arthur. Three. <laughs> Good for you. And I got a 19, so to heck with you. Let's see what did our... Lucretia, she got a three. Is that what's yours? Was that yeah, what I made yep. it. All right, perfect. And we'll just wait for Varus and uh, see what Varus gets. Ringing. Intelligence check. Intelligence check. Yeah, D20. It's a D20 intelligence roll. Oh, what? <laughs> so as you go through and you guys are, are walking now, Zadkiel, you and Arthur are like, eh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, what is Arthur? Is it Arthur, did he, does he have a 19? No, he's got an 18. Yeah. Um, as you guys are walking and you kind of look, uh, it, this place looks eerily like somebody's purposefully growing these mushrooms because they look like ended oh. fields almost. Hmm. So this could be somebody's farm. Well, it, well, the slavers might be using the 
the shrooms to to join slaves and so yeah uh do with my mining history would i know of any races that purposefully cultivate i see any ones that can be uh cultivated from poison um so i don't know what varus would know about poisons not being an apothecary nor being as a secondary skill so probably not um although you are familiar um with the fact that underground races a lot of times harvest these things as food and whatnot so it's quite possible that something from the underdark is doing it Although the slavers, it's quite possible as well that they're they're growing mushrooms and stuff and using them as psychedelics on slaves and whatnot too. Although um, that's not something I had thought about, but that's actually a great idea. Maybe I'm going to work that into my campaign. What's that? Should I have a secondary Most skill? times in uh in in, in first edition, can't you get secondary skills or something like that, or did that not come out till second edition? No, it's right in like page two yeah. or three yeah. of the DMG. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. You can get uh, secondary skills and whatnot. Typically, we roll for them, but if you want to just pick one, that's it's always fine by me too. Yeah, I want to pick like poison or something. Right. So. So. Okay. So an underdark. Quite Which possibly. Creatures that live in the Underdark and whatnot um, are known to... Uh, With the wet environment, though? Yeah, I mean, it's quite possible. I'm just trying to think of what the... It wouldn't be mine. wouldn't be drow. Well, I might know something about drow, since I am an elf. At least a story or two. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Maybe we should um, take cover and just watch, <laughs> see if somebody comes to. Yeah, it might, be, it might not be a bad idea to, to linger for a few minutes and see okay. behind and see behind something. something. Sort of it's... That's a good yeah. idea. We could even right. ambush them. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so move yourself. Where do you want to hide? What do you want to do? Well, not really sure what's... Find a big mushroom and stand behind it, I guess. And listen well, you can see there's... Here. Yeah, there's stalagmites yeah. over here and yeah, here. There's and there's ones over nobody. here and here. Hide up behind these. Those are big enough. I will join you. Ah. Quasius comes over. I know Zadkiel's not going to move himself, so I'll move him. Yeah. <laughs> I'll move myself. I'll just wait for you to move me. Whatever. So, as you are... I'm hiding in shadows. Okay. So, as you guys are hiding, suddenly coming out of the far tunnel... You see several lizard-like creatures uh-huh. That's coming what around I was over thinking. here, and Is you can right? you can see. Oh, hang on a second, let me do this. Wait a minute, have we seen these guys before? No. Oh man. Is yes. There... No, you oh, have. Yeah. No, you have not. I don't think you guys have ever seen, but you see oh. that they have like hoes and spears and stuff. And they're over here. They come over and they start working like farmers and, and digging and tilling and uh, doing whatever. Do they um, notice us? Uh, no, they do not. Um, you see that they slowly work their way down, kind of moving along, tilling and digging up and overturning. Um, a couple of them, uh, as they move down, they, they examine and they, or uh, they look back to another and they, they, they're grunting and they're like, <laughs> and they'll grab, like, looks like one of them has like a small sickle of some kind and he chops through a large mushroom and he carries it over and you don't notice it until he gets over there. But down here in the far corner, there appears to be like this big, huge 
container bucket made of 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 material of some kind and they're just tossing these mushrooms into it like they're harvesting but they they slowly kind of move up and down not noticing you at all well, we don't want to break cover until they're gone so we want to attack what are, do they they don't look what do, are they lizard men or are they um, they we would, so or would I know? you have never seen them but um, they're, they're some kind of a lizard creature but you do know what of troglodytes and they have that appearance uh, yeah because uh, we encountered them before what well, did you encounter them I know that you After. did no that <laughs> no that was the uh, that was the play test that I did a while back where you guys were all fifth uh, level and went into the Miss Marsh uh, ha ha yeah. ha ha nice try pal <laughs> okay so I guess so but you know that they're lizard but they they definitely have perhaps the look of either lizard men or perhaps uh, troglodytes but they don't have any weapons on them that you can see other than like they're tilling and they slowly work their way down. Um, they're there for maybe 20 minutes to a half hour or so. And then eventually they go back into that tunnel and depart. Okay. Definitely don't want to go to that tunnel. Um, what's How deep is that water? So as you guys are walking, it only looks like a couple of feet deep. It's not very deep at all. It's a just a large stream, um, relatively quick moving. Yeah, quick moving is a bad idea if you walk into it. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like that deep, right? So it's, I mean, it's quick moving in the sense, it's not like a rapid, it's like it's going blasting past you, but it's a, it's a, a solidly moving stream. You can hear um, in the distance from over here, um, you can see where the water has a large pool that feeds this little stream that runs by, but you can hear splashing. So it's, you can't see anything because these huge rocks here that are in your way. But on the far side, you can hear a loud splashing coming from there as if another waterfall is, is present in this chamber of somewhere. <clears throat> now that's in addition to the one that you know is down this direction. What's, we, you said it's glowing down here. Yeah, the, the lichen. The, there's like lichen and stuff that kind of coats the walls and whatnot. And it gives off this sort of an eerie bluish green kind of a light that allows you to sort of see fairly well down here. I have a, I have a quick question for you mm -hmm. concerning secondary skills. Okay. Would you take like herbalist? Since right. Poisoner is not really on this list. Right. Would you accept on the list to, to count for sure. like poisons and, and plants and stuff? Yeah, I could I could deal with that. All right. That's what I'll take then. Okay. Um so we wanna to try to go south here, guys, or we want to investigate where the troglodytes where those well, we're supposed to go up, so does, does it, this way is not going up, right? It's going down. Well, it, may have to go it down sort to go of, up. it kind of slopes downward from over here to over here. So in a general sense, it has a slight downward tilt to it, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, the water right. flows in that direction. So it's not seriously noticeable. It feels mostly level to you, but you know based on the water flowing that it, there's it's probably a little bit lower on one side of the chamber than the other, just not super noticeable. Well, the only, the only thing is if we clear out other areas and the slaves come down here, then these guys are going to probably attack them. So we don't have to deal with them sooner or later. So Alright, who's got the best charisma? We don't want we don't <laughs> we don't want to leave them behind to alert others. So right. we don't know if they're hostile either. No, we don't have to attack them necessarily, but 
We can't just ignore them either. Right. I got an idea. What if we do some confusing so we could just we could tip over their bucket of mushrooms and then lay a trail of mushrooms so whether we see these guys or that will at least make them wonder what's going on and sow some confusion. Is the bucket still there? They might, they might take offense to that though. Is the bucket still there, or did they take it with them? No, they did not take it. It looks like they just harvested some, left it there in the, in the big containers, and then walked away. Hmm. I guess we could do that, or maybe carry the bucket in for them. And, I don't know. I mean, I speak a lot of languages, but I don't think I speak theirs. So. Common. If we're going to try to negotiate some way of Yeah, I mean, we can try. Or I don't they, know. If they immediately try to kill us, what, what's our plan then? Um, we kill, kill them, them back. back. <laughs> kill them back? <laughs> that bitch poke, you owe me a Coke. <laughs> I'm thinking that since they eat these mushrooms, we should each grab a couple of mushrooms and throw it in our pouch. At worst, we can go, hey, look, we found some mushrooms for you. At least it's a nice <laughs> icebreaker. <laughs> Well, well, whether you guys want to my do. partners grab one or not, I'm going to grab a couple mushrooms and put them in my pockets. Okay. All right, you grab a few. How big um, is the bucket? So um, let me see if they actually have a description here for it. Um, so you can see several large bins have been erected right near the, the edge of the water, actually. It's not quite at the, where the tunnel is, but it's over here, like near the edge of the water. Um, okay. They appear to be constructed from long, thin mushroom stalks woven together with tough, woody roots um, for, the, for the edges of the walls of the bucket, and they're filled with lumps of fungus. A crude, two-wheeled cart made from dried mushroom stalk planks and mushroom cap wheels have been, uh, are, has been parked near one of the bins, half laden with dirt or compost. So over here, there's these sort of these, it looks like they're manufactured out of the mushroom stalks. Right, so they manufactured these big long bucket bins and woven together with roots and whatnot. And then there's a sort of a a makeshift cart made out of mushroom stalks, and the 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 caps for the mushrooms form the wheels of this little cart that has compost and other stuff on it. So, like I said, they they used it to sort of um, feed the mushrooms, I guess, if you will, and sort of till it and stuff like that. Sure. And, and then they. Uh, turn and left. So it's all right over here, and they left it all kind of here. Um, we could, we could maybe, uh, let's just walk in. I'm, <laughs> I don't know if I want to mess with gear, and they've got it set up. For okay. So where are we going to go then? All right. Well, either, either we go down, let's go down here and have a quick look then. Okay. And just ignore them for a minute. Since All right. We're not, we're not yeah. huh, we don't bother them. Maybe they don't, they won't care. But we can see. Okay. So you begin to move when suddenly you hear this <laughs> sound coming from over here and st- coming out of the the rock which is amazing to you that you didn't see these this guy he was blending into the rock you can see one of these lizard creatures he sort of he has a spear in his hand um he appears to be wearing some kind of um medallion and bracelets and what primitive people may call jewelry but you guys look at as sort of junk jewelry uh, As he but, sort of looks at you and he sort of stomps his his uh, spear on the ground, he's like, <laughs> and then he starts sort of flapping his hands like like this. If you could see me on the cam, he's sort of like, you know how you do puppet sock, Just make them talk. Oh, yeah. We have your fingers and your thumb kind of going up and down. He's like, <laughs> and he starts pointing back toward the tunnel where his friends left. And as he speaks, several others sort of come out of the rocks. All right, get ready, guys. All right. 
I don't think they're. Hand. I don't think they're aggressive. Um, I, put my hand, I put my hand on, on my sword and raise my other hand. He stands. He continue. stops. He stops as the, as the other two sort of flank him. And this one I, sort of comes uh, I come out in front. Okay. And I put my hand up like his, and I'm and I'm in it, and I go. <laughs> He just stops and he looks at you and he cocks his head. You, you, you help me. You, you help, help me. You, you help us. They speak common, or at least a little bit. So I say, how help? He looks and sort of cocks his head. And then he points his spear back in this direction. And then he waves his hands like big in the air, like, and they start slapping his hands together like this. I tell him, I tell him with my thumb, I go, I give him a thumbs up and go. He kind of looks and he turns and he starts walking and he stops and looks over his shoulder waiting for you. Yeah, well, okay. As you follow. So he stops right where these wagons are, and he stops and he puts his hand up. And then he points to the water in the center of the pool, and he's like, You, you help us. We help you. Okay. Um, how help? What? What is in the water? He starts slapping his hands like this. And he waves his hands like there's some big, huge thing in the water. An alligator. Like a water elemental? It could be anything. So a snapping turtle. As the other four companions of his sort of slide off the side, and they start slumping their things on the Pointing to the to the center of the pool. He sort of turns and he looks. I look with my own sight. <laughs> and okay. See where I see. Okay. Because uh, I can't see past this. I want to know if they're evil. Uh, does he let me walk up here so I can get a little better view? Uh, okay. Uh, you. So first of all... Um, you can see at the end of this great cavern, water tumbles out of a high spot in the wall and cascades down with the roar to splash into a large pool. Uh, Several uh, large bins yeah. have been erected around the edge of the water, constructed from long, thin mushroom stalks, and that's what you see here, right? Um, mm -hmm. But there's this large pool of water at the end where the waterfall sort of cascades. If you move up just a little bit, you'll be able to see a little farther. Well, I guess you can't. Let me go. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so you can see this waterfall cascading down over here from high up above. Um, however, you don't see anything in the water. The water itself is very murky and churny because of the waterfall itself. And then it, it sort of exits down here where you're at and flows downhill around the other side of the uh, other side of the chamber. And he sort of... And he sort of steps right up next to Deglin, right in your ear. And he points his spear. You, you help us. We help you. I wonder okay. if we went over here, if we can see, like, from above, maybe. If there was, like, maybe a way up near the falls. If you want to try to go up that way, and I'll, I'll go over here to the water's edge and see if there's... Um, I'm still not seeing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look over here. So see. when you get over there, you can see that right here, there mm -hmm. is. Um, uh, let me get a better description for you. Do -do -do. Um, a smaller stream meanders out from the mouth of this cavern, which has been barred by a series of dried, root-reinforced fungus stalks woven together to form a cage, wall, and door. A pungent odor wafts from the large chamber beyond, which is softly lit by more glowing fungus. As you walk over there, two of these lizard folk go with you, 
one of them gets over here and sort of stands and puts his hand up. It's like, <laughs> starts pointing back toward here. And he's like shaking his hand at you. And then he makes these big claw. He makes this big clawed hands like, like there's some big, huge creature monster on the other side of it. Okay. Well, that's probably not a safe way to go. Not by myself, anyway. Um, all right. As they walk I'll back over, over here. here. <laughs> I'll come by over here and have a look. <laughs> Let's see how deep this water is. Uh, you know you get to the water's edge. Just use your 10-foot Suddenly, pole. as you step up, and you step up with your 10-foot pole, and you begin to start sort of swirling in there, you see the water cascading down from a waterfall. It splashes huge, um, uh, causing this little, like, uh, a plume of mist to sort of cascade over the whole uh, area at the end there. Suddenly, right in the center, you could see almost like a whirlpool begin to form and suddenly this massive snake-like creature sort of lashes out of the water. Oh, fun. A giant snake, wonderful. No, it's not. It's a water weird. Oh, oh, oh. oh, damn. oh. oh those are damn things. And here we go for initiative. It is I'm bringing everybody down here so I can get everybody an initiative in the Bring time. I one of these years ago and mess with my party. <laughs> I know it. Not one. I put it in a well. <laughs> All right. As we go, our actions. Varus, action. Oh, magic longsword. Stab one of you. All right, longsword. You got a plus one, right? Yep. All right, Zad kill. Yeah, I'm gonna charge it. Yeah, you're gonna charge into the water. I'm going to charge uh, to the edge of the water. <laughs> okay. want to like double that. check something here. Just want to be sure. Uh. Uh, da -da -da -da. Sharp weapon again. Damage equal to. Okay. Do do do. Uh, and, uh do, 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 do. okay. I just wanted to make sure what happens. Okay, so Zadkiel is attacking with his longsword. Yes. The, the plus two longsword. Yes. All right. Uh, let's go ahead, Deglin. Uh, hammer. Hammer. Loquacious. Well, I'm going to move to see if I can get an angle to unload with a crossbow shot while not getting within reach of this thing. Okay. And it, it's made of water. Like a pistol. Yes, that is correct. Um, oh, I want to double yeah. check. All right. So you are going to do crossbow. And now I need to double check Arthur just to make sure what he's got spell wise. He can do magic missile. Fireball might work. Well, it's against water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, over water, so it wouldn't set turn, anything on yeah, fire. Turn steam. Yeah, they do have. Uh, they do. They do some damage, so maybe that'll. Maybe that that'll be able to work. Um, so he'll, he'll try that. Um, and then after that, he'll try magic missile. So he can do that. All right, cool. So I want to see what he's got here. Yep. Now, hang on a second. I don't think his slot. Oh yeah, it is. He's got one third level spell slot. Okay, cool. Sweet. So Arthur is going to fireball this thing. So if nothing else, it'll knock some damage off it. Um, Okay. Everybody has their action stated. The ball. And let us go and see who gets the initiative. Because this is the fun part. And if ever be... You guys like being sucked underwater. Why does it keep doing that? Okay. No, we don't. <laughs> we don't like that Here at we all. go. <laughs> the creature. That's weird. 
why did it give him that first let's go here let's go back so the water weird uh, immediately attacks Deglin splashes out of the water moves right here slashes out and uh, attacks as a six hit die creature target you oops Hello. Eighteen. Ugh. As it hits. Uh. I need you to give me. I need you to give me a saving throw versus paralyzation. You take no damage. But the water weird immediately engulfs you and drags you into the water with it. I need you to give me a saving throw versus paralyzation or be dragged into the water. Nice. That fails. Yeah, that fails. Yep, that uh, fails. So you guys watch as the water weird immediately grabs a grab hold. Huh? Can I, I use a 20? That's why I was or use the neg uh, the one, right? Oh, yeah, yeah either way either way you've got two nat 20s you have two nat 20s and a two nat ones that you guys are able to use so you can use either one the nat one would mean it it misses you or the nat 20 means you made your save and you're not pulled into the water let's use the nat one okay so he no longer hits you and that is its attack Varus. Uh, try and stab it. Okay, this is using your plus one longsword, right? Yep. Okay. It has... Oh, oh man. how close was that? Uh, Eight misses. It has an armor class four, by the way. Four. I need 15. Yep. Uh, As you miss... Uh-huh. As your blade goes slashing through it, but just splashes water, apparently ineffectual on this massive creature. Anything else for you? Um, I'll let, I'll let someone else try and hit it before okay. we use these Z Zad Zadkill. As you are able to move up. All right, I am going to uh, smite it with my sword. Okay. It's a wood sword. It is a wood sword, but it is a plus two wood sword. Nineteen plus all that other stuff hits. Go ahead and roll your damage. All right, it's a large creature, so right. Yeah, but uh, edged weapons only do one hit point of damage to it. Oh. So, one hit point of damage plus the magic from the blade. You don't even need to roll. Uh, so it takes so three. Takes three plus any strength bonus on it as well. Oh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in the strength as well. What's your strength, Zed? Yeah, I have three plus three strength and plus two, so it's plus five, so six total. So six total? Yeah. Nice. So you manage to see a, a, almost like an electric shock as your blade swipes through this creature and it shudders as it feels the pain from your blade. And you could just almost see the where its eyes might be just looking right at you like, I see you. I tell him, I got cataract, sorry. Uh, <laughs> as Arthur casts his all. Oh. I need to double check what, and, uh, I don't think I put the whole thing of fireball in there. I was just wondering what the, uh, yeah. Wondering what the casting time is on a fireball. This is why I don't play other people's characters, because I don't know the spell book. Uh, let's see. Fireball. Fireball goes off in three segments. So he begins casting <clears throat> Fireball, and it will go off at the end of this round. Actually, 
he casts it on three, it'll go on. Or he casts it on four, it'll go on seven. So it'll go last at the end of the round. So he begins casting his fireball, but it doesn't go off yet. Deglin. I'm going to try to hit it with the hammer. Okay. Eleven fourteen. you slam into it with your hammer. The water splashes, sending water spraying all over Zadkiel and Varus, but has no effect on the creature before you. Really? Okay. Yeah, is it a magic hammer? No. Yeah, so it doesn't do any damage. Hmm. And in fact, okay. it does, to be honest, the water weird doesn't even say anything about getting hit. It just says, sharp weapons inflict one point of damage. Damage equal to its hit points disrupts it, but it reforms in two melee rounds. Um, other things can do damage to it, like magic and stuff like that. All other attacks do no damage. So even technically magic, um, I shouldn't even add the magic bonus, but I do. I add the magic bonus at least, but um, has to be a, a magic weapon before, I, before it will hit. So, Loquacious. Go ahead and fire your, your crossbow, sire. You can do it, sir. Woo, you're level four. Just kidding. Um, 11, I believe that misses against armor class four for you, but let's check anyway. Uh... Armor class four. Yep, you need a 14 to hit. Did I notice that the other non-magical weapons didn't... You're not really... Sh to be honest, you're not really sure who's got magic weapons or not. Um, uh, although you you could see that whatever, um, whatever the elf and paladin struck the beast with appeared to sh shudder it as it got its attention. Um, but whatever... When you just... Excuse me, you fired your crossbow, the, the water, or the uh, bolt went right through the water and out the other side. It did not appear to affect it all. Um, and from what you could tell, Deglin's attack with his hammer didn't seem to do anything to the beast either. As now, the fireball goes off and it has to make a dexterity or a savings throw versus spells, I mean. do sure that I got this right. Alright. Saving throw for half. Alright. Do, 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 do. Uh, one six-sided for each level of experience of the caster. So it's going to be 5d6 or is that each level of experience of the caster yep so it's 5d6 okay so he is going to make sure that he doesn't blast anybody he's going to center it on the back side of the the creature oops my bad. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about any of that. I just need to do Arthur. So Arthur is going to target this thing. He is going to... Oh, just going to say, yeah, so we're going to go... All right, he'll do 20 points of damage unless the creature makes its saving throw. Uh, uh. Is the... Oh. 11. He fails his save. He suffers 20 hit points of damage. As you guys watch as Arthur in, uh, 
whispering incantations as you guys are all trying to flail at this massive creature of water. Suddenly he releases the energy of the spell and it goes streaking across the chamber about halfway across the pond. Suddenly it balloons into this billowing ball of fire that engulfs the creature, causing the heat wave to splash over the top of the the three frontline warriors, Deglin, uh, oh. Zadkiel, and Varus. You guys feel this wash of steam and heat as the creature flails in the water as it erupts in flame, uh, unable to escape the the energy of the spell. Um, you can see that Arthur severely wounded this thing as it is now significantly smaller than it originally started as we go back to the top of the order. Anybody have anything different that they want to do as Arthur is getting ready with his magic missile? I'm I'm going to retreat back because I have no way of hitting this. Okay. I am also moving out and just going to take cover. Okay. Varus? Me and Zenkill. Okay. Run. All right. All right. As we roll initiative, as the creature gets its initiative first, as it goes after Zadkiel because he hurt him. Well, he hurt me too. Uh, (laughs) 17 hits. You Uh, suffer no damage. You suffer no damage, but you need to... Huh? It hits a negative two. Yeah, that's what it was actually rolling against. Oh, okay. yeah, it's it hits as a six hit die creature. So, okay, so it had a nineteen and minus two for my protection of evil. If it's if it's evil, uh, yeah, I would consider it evil. So that's so it's a seventeen then it's against negative two. It needs a sixteen. Okay, oh, sorry, a fifteen. So it naturally rolled a seventeen. So it hits you. So I need you. To give me a saving throw versus paralyzation or be sucked into the water. All right. Fourteen, you made your save as you fortunately you are, uh, uh, the creature is unable to drag you into the water, weakened by the the spell from from Arthur the, the the furious fireball that erupted around him. Yeah, I barely made it. <laughs> yep, Varus. Six, Varus misses as your blade slices into the thing, but appears to do no damage against it. Sad kill. I'm using a twenty. Okay. Go ahead and you get, so you get your strength one plus your strength plus the, the magic of the blade. So that's total of six again. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't it max damage because it's critical? No, because doesn't matter. Uh, uh, edged weapons only do one, one hit point of damage. Doesn't matter what it is. You don't roll. You don't create. You don't anything. Edged weapons do one hit point of damage. Oh, well it, then, I don't want to use it. I'll roll it. I didn't know that. I thought I got a crit for it. No, that's what I said I before. Edged. It. Okay. Hit armor class. I, I know, but I thought crits get max damage of whatever, even if it's one plus. No, the no, extra. It, it, no, because you can only do one hit point of damage, so that is the max damage against it. All right. Let's roll. Uh, two misses. Okay. All right. Next up, Arthur. Arthur is going to immediately pelt this thing with a magic missile. Let me see if I if it took it off. Yep, it did. Okay. And we are going to cast. Oh. And he does seven hit points of damage to the creature. <laughs> As Arthur pelts it. Do you only hit two? I thought you had three. Uh, you could be right. 
I'm actually, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure magic even does anything on water weirds, but I'm just allowing it this time just because I'm not 100% um, in on that. I mean, I mean, it should. Magic protects pretty well, much everything. Yeah. Was, yeah. That's well, literally, literally, it says all other attacks cause no harm. So, I mean, it's like, I don't know. Uh, it says um, sharp edge weapons, only one point of damage. Damage equal to its hit points will disrupt it, but it reforms in two rounds. A uh, cold magic slows it. Fire spells do half or no damage. Um, a purify water spell uh, will instantly kill it. All other attacks cause no harm. So that tells me nothing really that's affects weird. this. But, yeah. Uh, that's okay. I don't really mind. This is my rules. So. Yep. Yep. Fair enough. Um, as a fifth level. Uh, yep. Yeah, you're right. You should have one more. So. He would do 1d4. Plus 2. Actually, plus 1. And he does another 5 hit points. Which is enough to take down our creature. As Arthur and his magic missiles take down the creature. As it, it, it sort of flails in the water for a second. All of a sudden, it, almost as fast as everything appeared. It disappears fades into the into the water the water soon becomes calm uh, is it gonna reform in two rounds like it no so what that means is if if let's say it has 20 hit or it has 10 hit points and you do 10 hit points to it or whatever it'll uh, it'll go away but then it'll it'll come back or whatever right so but if you did 11 hit points then it wouldn't right so it says Damage equal to its hit points disrupts the water weir, but it reforms in two rounds. Um, so, no, actually, that's actually a good point. If if you would have hit it with a weapon or done it, whatever, then it could reform. But for magic, I'm not saying so. Again, that's just kind of... It's weird how it's worded, but that's just how I'm, I'm calling it. The, mm -hmm. the magic missiles sort of disrupted it and managed to take the creature down. As soon as that happens, suddenly this off and <laughs> as the creatures one over um sort of come running over to you their apparent leader the one that's wearing sort of the the jewelry or whatever it is that you want to call it um comes up to you guys and uh, sort of bows and nods and he starts waving his hand <laughs> over in this direction and he starts walking this way followed by his entourage let me lead you guys all the way over to this area. Okay. Maybe um, I'm going to pull out like, I guess like a gold coin. One gold coin. Okay. And I'm going to show it to him and say... You know, we're going to go up, and I point up, mm -hmm. and then I said, then we're going to come back down. You get one of these, and I'll give him the gold. He looks at it, he's like, <laughs> you help us, we help you. And he so pockets the coin. <clears throat> okay, okay. And he walks over here, and he opens this, and he steps in. And the other troglodytes kind of follow him in, sort of coming this way, forming kind of a here. And as you guys step in, suddenly you see this massive lizard. This thing is massive as it's over there, and it sort of looks, and one of the troglodytes reaches into a, a satchel that it's carrying, and it tosses this huge chunk of meat over to this giant lizard and the lizard moves over and begins feasting on the meat as one of the other troglodytes grabs another chunk of meat and tosses it over there. The leader steps over here and he points into the waterway going here. <laughs> this way, this way up. Okay. Follow. And then he points for you guys to go into the water to go up. Yeah, I'll check the water and 
So the water here is um, is flowing slowly. It's not. Uh, it's about the same speed. Um, but as you as you get in there, Varus, you can see that um, just inside, about ten feet or so to the right, <clears throat> you can see that you are on the back side of the waterfall. Um, only now, as you guys are coming in here, it slopes upward. Um, so it slopes kind of steeply upward, and as you get up there, you're you're probably like 30 feet up or so, in and you're looking out a crevice on the back of the from the back of the waterfall, and you can see it flowing over into the chamber beyond. Okay. Um, Do I have to climb up again, or no? I... So in about 10 feet or so, the crevice opens to the back side of the waterfall. A torrent of water rushes down and past the end of the crevice, blocking the way. Most of the cascade disappears, flowing elsewhere. But a wedge of water diverts a small amount into the crevice where you stand and continues on into the lizard cavern. Um, it, it's pretty, it's pretty, st not steep, but it's, you are, I, I was staying corrected. Where you're at here, it's difficult in the sense that the water is rushing very quickly past your feet. So, um, well, I, ten foot uh, pull, uh, pull balance. Yeah. And so, um, the thing is, it's just a matter of, um, taking care and walking along the edge here. You can sort of walk along and eventually get to a drier area that appears to lead upwards. All right. Stay on the edge. <laughs> like the other, like the other way. As we go in, and once again, you guys are. I'm gonna put you in the order that you was. Uh, hopefully, they'll feed the lizard too. <laughs> yep. We get the slave deal going in. Oh, so boy. as you as you get into this crevice, it begins sloping upward. Slowly, you guys move through. And by the way, where you're at, Varus, if you guys see on the map, there's this little... That just means there's a break in the map, so they don't have to draw it as long as it actually is. Oh, right? okay. So, gotcha. So yeah. it's not a bridge. It's just, oh, we're doing a break here. So Because this actually runs for about 100 feet or so as you gotcha. guys... Gotcha. Um, the crevice runs straight, slowly rising for perhaps 80 feet or so. Uh, at that point, it's almost completely blocked by what appears to be an old but intact stone staircase that is dropped from above. A yawning area of darkness is obvious overhead. So right here where you get to right to this spot. Mm -hmm. well, let's, I'll put you here so you move everybody in. Right there, the stairs led to an upstairs, right? Yeah. But it, it, the stairs have collapsed. So there's this gapping hole in the ceiling about 10 or 15 feet up that leads into whatever is up there. Oh, Jesus. So we got to climb it. Yeah. So what do you want me to tell you? Jump. Hey, man. That's all right. Well, it's, well, it's only just... 10 feet. We can throw a grappling hook. Yeah. Let's throw a grappling hook. And... Okay. Well, I could probably lift one of you. Push it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, lift me up. All right. <laughs> I go up there and lift them up. All right. Yeah, can, yeah, so as you secure, step up there. Yeah, I can secure something and throw, throw a rope down. <laughs> okay. Um, so he pushes you up into the room above. And you find a place where you can secure the rope. So your comrades can be pulled up or climb up or whatever. Yeah. The entirety of this room, formed from large blocks of smoothly dressed stone, sags precariously. The floor sloped downward toward the cracked, broken hole where the stairs once sat. So it sort of runs up away from you, Avaris. Mm -hmm. the, and the whole place sort of sags like it's, like it's sitting on its foundation. Um... The walls are twisted out of square. The ceiling droops in the middle. High along one wall where the stairs once rose to a doorway is now only a brick-filled archway. Um, a second opening sits low in the opposite wall, an arch a couple of feet in height filled with rusted iron bars. In one corner is over here, in this left-hand corner, 
there's a large pile of refuse uh, at a, on a, of a large yellow mound. It faintly resembles a stack of very old rotting crates, barrels, and chests nestled against collapsed shelving. Uh, this is probably another pirate storage or something. Um, I'm going to suspect that it's probably something dangerous and warn my companions to not disturb that. Okay. Unless we want to, like, set the fire to it or something. Did you cut down a rope yet? Yeah? Yeah, I threw one down. Okay, so we can... Yeah, secure it and throw it down. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So, um, looking, you can see that the it's a little arch here with iron bars in there. The iron bars themselves appear to be all rusted and dilapidated. Um, it looks like on the other side there's some kind of a sewer. There's a little ledge um, mm -hmm. on the other side of the bars, and then there's a 20-foot-wide sewer running left and right, but the ledge is just on the other side of the bars. There's some kind of mold or something going on over here. We probably want to either not mess with it or do something to take care of it eventually. And, uh, Maybe once we figure out what we're doing, we can come back and throw some fire on there and see what survives the fire. Might be a good idea. And you want to pen these bars are pretty rusty. You can probably just yank them out. Yank them. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and we're going to have to crawl through the sewer and some high point and figure out what's going on. I don't All know. Right. <laughs> so Deglin is going to move over there and rip the bars out. Yeah. So it really takes no effort on the part of you at all as the uh, you grab a hold of the bars, you sort of start squeezing them, and they literally almost crumble in your hands. And after a few waves of your hands and a few jerks, the bars are gone, giving you a little two-foot-high archway to crawl through to get into the sewers on the other side. Okay. Barris, you want to go first and check and make sure there's no traps? Yeah, I will uh, carefully... Who puts traps right there in the sewer entrance? Come on, guys. Really? Uh, I'll look both ways and uh, <laughs> keep my tent up before you, and... before you cross the street, you're going to look both ways? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not stupid. That yep. I want to raise this stupid. Fast. This so <laughs> you step out the the sewer water you can see Varus as you poke with your pole is about four and a half feet deep maybe five feet deep tops mm. um, there's a five foot wide ledge to that skirts along the edge of the uh, yeah let's skirts stay along on the edge, edge okay. right. so I know there's a waterfall back here probably that leads down into where we just came from. So I'm not uh, sure what order, but I'm going to put you guys back in the same order that you were going. Well, I was going to go that makes this sense. way. Oh, you're yeah. going to go this way. Okay. Because I don't, I don't think there's anything this way. Okay. Without crossing the, the sewer. Okay. All right. Well, at least I want to look this way. And yeah, see you're fine. There's... So this ancient sewer is a vaulted passageway of crumbling brick and stone. A variety of molds and slimes and a multitude of colors cover the floors, walls, ceilings, all, the, all around. A ledge five feet wide runs along a side of the channel of flowing water, the surface of which flows about a foot or so below the level of the walkway. The water itself actually looks pretty clean. It doesn't look like sewage. It looks like pure water. Um, but the ledge sits up about a foot higher than the top of the water level. But the water itself, as you dip with your 10 foot pole, um, is about give or take, you know, four or five foot. 
as Arthur is going to reignore, a, reignite his torch. I'm lighting one. Oh, you're lighting one? Okay. I'll turn Arthur's off. Okay. I'm lighting one too. Stop. No, my light. Are you going to do your light oh, wait, spell? That's the other campaign. Never mind. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't have a light spell as Arthur comes out. No, but we do have those continual light lanterns. Yeah, the Just... continual light lamp. That's what I'm going to use. Okay. And we are going to do this for you. All right. So, Varys, you work your way along the edge and about 10, 20, 30, 40, about 60 feet feet down to the east you can see that the sewer has collapsed or there it's collapsed on that side so whatever used to be um doesn't appear mm. to be there's water flowing from it um mm. so there's obviously some That's way water. that water comes through this way but mm. there's no way to continue that direction oh yes we have to do i was hoping that wasn't gonna happen but is what it is. <laughs> okay. Should we cross or oh there's nothing on the other it's a straight we wall. We can't cross, can we? There's not no. there's no like ledge over here. No, there's yet. no ledge on that side, so you can walk down the middle of the sewer. Um but I say no, I, I no. say sewer. I say sewer, but it's not like sewer, it's like clear water. Um so it actually it's looks like, relatively fresh. So this whatever what long. used to be a sewer hasn't been used in forever. Storm um yeah, there you go, storm drain. Let's go down this way and see what there is. Okay. So, like I said, um, as you're walking down this sewer, the the walls, the floors, the ceiling, every place that you see, you see this sort of fungus and molds and whatnot growing as 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 naturally as as you would expect in subterranean wet locations such as this. Uh, looking for any that look hostile. Okay. <laughs> um, so, like I said, the ancient sewer is a vaulted passage of crumbling brick and stone, right? And you see all this mold and whatnot uh, as you move along. Um, however, as you get around the corner, you can see that um, the mold and whatnot, as you get like right about here, the mold and whatnot um, along this stretch, the ceiling itself is free of mold and exposed... Uh, and the exposed stone you can see glistens with moisture. A steady drip of water falls from many points along this bare spot, like droplets from tree branches in the rain. And you can hear a <laughs> swirling, sort of a gurgling sound from up ahead. Um, and Varus, your keen eyesight spots a circular flow of water as a drain uh, might be spinning down there. So you could see that wherever the water is coming from here, it sort of hits this drain and begins rushing downwards. Uh, so what is this? Um, nothing yet because we haven't got there. Um <laughs> Uh, let's see. So, I need you. So, so as you guys, uh, as you guys get here, the like I said, the ceiling and whatnot's glistening with water as it's dripping and stuff. And as you guys step, the drops hit you, and as it hit you, you guys feel this intense burn as if acid was dropping on you. Everybody okay. in this area. Uh, suffers two hit points of damage as this wetness sort of drips onto you guys. Hey. Hey. <laughs> as um, you look, as you look, ah, as the water continues to drip. Um, don't have another Check it out with my, huh? my torch, though. Yeah, look for, look for the creature or whatever it is. Well, it's acid or something. Check it oh, out with my torch. Stand yeah, back. Yeah, might, might be some kind of mold or pudding or something. Hang on a sec. You said everyone gets two? Some creature. Two hit points, yeah. Why did that okay. not? There we go. <laughs> As you guys are... I wish I would have had this before. I apologize. I forgot to uh, 
Give me two seconds. You guys can watch how I can build a scene really quick. Do 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 do. Trying to get my character sheet. Do do do. Do do do. And do do do. Can't believe I was ill prepared. You guys watch as an ochre jelly begins to drop over the top of everybody. I need everybody. Uh. Dun dun dun. As we have fun in combat, that's why we play tavern music. All right. You guys gain the initiative, but I need actions first. Ferris, action. Magic sword to the jelly. Okay. Is that Gil? I'm gonna take my sword and spread it like jelly on the on the <laughs> concrete. I wish Arthur had a lightning bolt because he'd do lightning bolt, but that's okay. Deglin. Um, is this thing on us or is it just It's dropping? drop it's dropping over the top of you guys, yes. It's literally yeah. dropping onto you. So it would hit my torch first. Oh, yeah, I could definitely hit your torch first. Does the torch do anything to it? Uh, don't know yet. I haven't uh, decided. Which, I just want to know what your actions are. Well, I'm going to smack it with my hammer. Okay. <laughs> if, unless it's the torch, and then I'll use the torch. All right. Uh, Loquacious. Time for the halberd. All right. All right. So this massive ochre jelly-like stuff that already dropped on you guys causing this intense pain attacks. But you guys gained the initiative first. Varus, you are up. By the way, it has armor class 8. It's not like it has a 15 hits. Is it large? Uh, no. This is a medium-sized creature. Nine hit points. Nine points of damage. Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you. As it as it drops down over the top of you, you immediately slice your blade up and you watch it sizzle through it um, as the, the acid sort of eats away at your blade, but fortunately the magic fends it off. Right. Loquacious. Halbert and Fists. <laughs> You go, boy. Natural 20! Woo! -hoo! Nicely done. We can't even get a hoo hoo come out of it because I always have the dice set out. Natural yeah. 20 as a critical hit. So roll your damage and then add max halberd damage to it. So roll a t die 10 and add 10 to it. Oh, so I keep looking for the dice to roll. You can't. Ah, uh, nicely done. Why is it plus 12 and a half? Monks add a half point of damage oh. every level. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, I forgot about that. Total of 15, though. Oh, man. You nearly cut the thing in half as you slice through it. You guys watch as the monk, screaming his monk war cry, slices down upon this thing before it's even in the water carving a huge swath of it off splattering it over on some bread and having lunch while waiting for you guys to finish it off <laughs> oh he needs some peanut butter Arthur's gonna toss some darts at it because he really doesn't want to use a spell on this thing so he's gonna cast his inventory he's gonna cast his three darts missile roll 15 hits and he does three hit points of damage as Arthur's one dart takes it out. Well, that was oh, quick and easy. Yeah. That was quick and easy. Well, it didn't didn't hurt that it had a critical hit by a halberd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good teamwork. <laughs> yes, sir. As you guys managed to take down the creature before it had even a chance against you guys, although it did drip upon you. 
As you get toward the end, you can see at this point in the sewer, the water swirls and vanishes into some unseen drain below the surface. The current here looks very strong. I probably don't. So there's no way across. Maybe we want to go back up the tunnel and cross. Yeah. Um, oh. On the other side, you can see that a section of the tunnel wall has tumbled down, revealing a large flooded chamber beyond. Several stone structures, pro structures protrude from the water's surface like a giant's toy blocks dropped into a basin. Mm. I'll well, can I see? These are five uh. foot squares? No, these are ten foot squares. Oh. So... Is, is there just more water and rubble? Yes, water? that is correct. Okay. So it looks like we got to go this way, huh? All right. So, yeah, let's go back like, over here and cross and hug the wall and try to get to that opening. Yeah, you said the depth was only like four feet or something. Yeah, the depth of the water here is about four or five, four, four and a yeah. half, five feet. Yeah, I'm trying to hold on to this wall or... You know, let's tie use some, let's, use let's some tie off. or something. Yeah. yeah let's, let's tie off. Yeah. Tie everybody up. <laughs> and, uh, okay. And go across. Okay. Like, here somewhere. And, uh, Oops. My bad. Like, okay. And then hug the wall and try and get up to this area here. All right, you guys hug the wall. Use my 10-foot pole as leverage, too. Okay. As I said, you get over here. You look inside. it. You can't really tell how far in or, or how big the room is from here yet because it is kind of dark. But you do note that the floor inside the chamber is a couple of feet below the where you guys are standing now. So were you to step into the chamber, the water will immediately go to about seven to eight feet deep. The oh, ceiling, the really? ceiling, the ceiling is about, I want to say not quite 10 feet above the water. So um, the ceiling overall is, is, is probably about 15 feet high with the water evenly about halfway up. This is going to suck for those slaves trying to get out of here. This and is this, just going to be a nightmare. <laughs> well, this we is where we're going to end tonight's game. All uh, right. We're going to end it a few minutes early just so we don't have to go through all of this because I don't know how long this next room will take. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here for cool. tonight. That's cool. For those who stayed with us, I definitely appreciated it. A lot of action tonight, a little bit of role play, a little bit of... <laughs> coming back from those that ever... <laughs> For those that uh, went through the the first, uh, I think that was the first stream that I ever did. Of the marsh or something. Like was the Ruins of the Mist Marsh. And it was a play test because I was going to run that at GaryCon a couple years ago or last year, whenever it was, when I first started doing it. And um, it was an adventure that I wrote, and it was in the um, uh, one of the living, uh, or not living, but one of the uh, Oerth journals. Um, I think Oerth Journal 11 is the Ruins of the Mist Marsh adventure that I did. It's either 10 or 11. I forget which one. Was. I did two adventures, one in OJ-10, one in OJ-11. And one of those was the one. But anyway, and there were troglodytes down there, and everybody always thought it was funny how I, how I was using their voice to talk like that and stuff. So it was, it was just kind of cute. But anyway, um, I do appreciate everybody that has hung out with us. I'm going to shift over to the after party just so we can kind of get it over there. Um, for those that have never been here before, our after party is exactly that. It is we hang out just like after a D&D &D game, players and, and DM and whatnot want to hang out and maybe drink a beer or smoke a cigarette or do whatever you do after a game and just kind of talk and shoot the breeze for a little while. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. Um, we are uh, over on our Discord channel. If you want to join us, you can hit the Discord channel and join the open chat. Um, you just look for our voice channels. We got one for subscribers. We got one for the Pax Mercury, who are our followers. And then we have the open channel for everybody. So I'm going to jump over there in three, two, one. And now I am over on the open channel. So you are more than uh, welcome to join us. I appreciate, again, everybody that hung out with us tonight. Um, pretty decent little session, man. Like I said, a lot of... 
a lot of good exploration going on, kind of a dungeon delve with uh, a little more, a little more oomph into it. Um, I want to uh, thank players. I appreciate you guys kind of sticking with me through a couple of the technical glitches we had, um, particularly around the uh, the uh, the issue with the the intermission. I don't know what happened there. I think Monkey did something to his his audio stream, which by the way, if you guys have not seen monkey boogers channel over there on SoundCloud, you need to go check it out. Uh, the dude does some really, really good work. We are more than thrilled to have him as one of our players in our one E and on our five E game. So dude, I appreciate that guys. Hope you're, it was a decent game for you tonight. Um, just enough interaction of, uh, action as well as, uh, investigation and a little bit, of a minor bit of role play there with the, uh, with the troglodytes and stuff. Maybe that can be, Something that works out in the future as you guys bring the slaves back, but not too bad tonight, man. It made pretty good progress, I thought. Yeah, well, I appreciated having the dice room so I could be a part of the active <laughs> game with you guys. Yeah, that was no problem at all. And I told you, dude, um, we don't have a problem rolling the dice for you, um, but I've always felt that players like to roll their own dice. So I figured. Why not? Just drop a, we have a, uh, we have a PC creation room that you can do dice rolling in, but I didn't want to conflate that with uh, rolling dice. So that is specifically so people can go roll dice, uh, when they want to. And then, uh, hopefully, uh, in the near future, we'll be able to actually get you out into the game. So, but you know what I, I told you, man, we're not going anywhere. And unless you're going somewhere, I don't plan on saying, Hey, you can't play because you can't get on forge because, that's not how we roll, man. We we got a player. You can we can figure out a way for you to get involved as long as you can see, right, what's going on. I know sometimes it's a little difficult and stuff, but as long as you can see the map and have a general idea what's going on. Um, and by the way, if if you're saying you can't see something and you need me to zoom in, I can zoom in pretty damn far on those on those maps. They're pretty high quality, so I could zoom in as far as you need so you can see what's going on. You just need to let me know. I just try to keep the maps. Try to keep the maps open a little bit to, uh, or I mean, zoomed out a little bit so the stream and stuff can see see the whole map and whatnot. So, but yeah, man, it was kind of fun. I had a good time tonight. All right, well, fellas, I'm gonna go hit the showers. I enjoyed it, dude. We appreciate it because you stink. I didn't want to say it out loud, but <laughs> the, the 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 general consensus behind the scenes was you need to hit the showers. Monks are like that though, right? Aren't they? They they sort of take long sabbaticals and stuff like that, and then they'll go sit Roger, out in the woods I'm, or whatever. I'm in between <laughs> bathing for a while. <laughs> All right, Ian, I appreciate it, man. We'll see you next week. You bet. Bye-bye. See you, brother. For the rest of you fellers, appreciate you hanging out. Yeah. Looks like uh, I think we lost uh, uh, Varus <laughs> didn't come across with us, so I think he just dropped, which is cool. I know that he usually drops right after and stuff. So everybody else out there in chat, hopefully the game was uh, entertaining enough for you guys. As always, as I said, you come see us. We give you nothing but quality entertainment and technical glitches. You want technical glitches, figure out how to fix them on the fly, you come watch our stream. We can show we've hit just about every snafu that we could possibly imagine. But is what it is. I had fun. I had a good time. Wiping my blade off in the water. I like it. I like it. All right. What do we want to talk about, man? Anything? Anything in general? Monkey, you going to figure out why your stream doesn't work for me? What are you talking about? Come on, man. The music. <laughs> yeah. He knows. Oh, no. He knows what we're talking about. Oh. oh. Look at that. I think it's your... Uh, Roy, coming yeah. in at the last minute, dude. I appreciate that, dude. I appreciate that beyond belief. That is awesome, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Come in what? there, just Troy came in and dropped a uh, a uh, gift subscription to Aether Nalus, who plays Arthur in this game, who used to play Arthur in this game. I don't know if he's coming back. I just I haven't heard word officially, but I think personally that he uh, I think he's probably going to drop the one e game. So we're going to have to look for us for another one e player. So we'll have to find somebody. Yeah, there's Troy. Get Troy. That's what I said. I just said it. It just popped up on my thing. Troy did a, did a gifted a uh, a sub 
which I appreciate that, man. No, yeah. get Troy. Oh, get Troy? Nah, he's not He's not much of a player, I don't think. I don't know, but um, I don't know. I feel weird asking him to play. He's like one of our biggest supporters, and I'd hate for him to think <laughs> support the stream himself. So that's all right. We're good. Oh, man. What was I going to go look at? I forget, man. I'm just completely lost. I was going to go look up something, and now I completely forgot what I'm going to look at. So, um, oh, I know. I'm going to go out to... The other thing I want to figure out is um, I'm going to have to work out my mod thing because I was very... Yeah, exactly. Atlas, dude. Get the Atlas done, slacker. But don't... I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean slacker like in a good way because I don't want you to stop coming over here and hanging out with us <laughs> just because we call you names. But uh, Troy's an old shipmate, man. He and I served back in the day. Don't know if we served any place at the same, but... He and I served back in the day, so he, uh, you want to talk about somebody that supports the community, man. That is, that is the guy. So I'll be glad to see that when it comes out, man, that, that, that work that, that I saw the last time, it looked, looked pretty badass. So I'm pretty, pretty stoked. Always stoked about Greyhawk content. Always stoked. So, so what do you got going on, Deglin? Anything, anything that we need to do with your character and shit? My character? I yeah. need to get a magic weapon. <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Yep. Apparently so. Yeah. And so, like I said, I think had I wanted to, um, I could have gone with the strict rules as written where no magic really affected it. Right. Um, all right, man, we'll see you later, Troy. I appreciate it. Much, much love, man. Appreciate the love. Um, so rules as written say that, uh, edged weapons only do one point of damage. It doesn't say anything about strength, doesn't say anything about the magic ability of it, anything. It just says one one hit point of damage. It says that fire does half or no damage. So if whatever damage it does, um, if it saves, it takes none. If it doesn't save, it takes half, right? So that's what that's what happened on the when he did that damage. And I think I screwed that up. I think I, I think I took off the full 20 instead of just 10, but that's okay. Um, and then the, uh, you said something about purify water. Yeah. Purify water kills a water weird. There's, there's a spell for clerics, purify food and drink. Yeah. I don't, would yeah. that have worked? So yeah. I, yeah, I think that's it. Not a hundred percent, but I have to double check but I don't know if there's a separate one called Purify Water, but I think it is Purify Food and Drink. There, so is, a, there is a separate one that's Purify Water, I believe. It's, is it? Oh, it's Druid. Druid has Got that it. spell. Got it. But I wonder if a cleric can cast it. That's interesting. So anyway, so the bottom line is, like, when I did, like, Magic Missile, let's say, I could have just said, yeah, Magic Missile doesn't doesn't affect it at all. Sorry. We could have boiled the water, and that would have affected that, it. Would yeah, well, it. Hit, hitting it with a torch. Yeah, there you go. Hit it with a torch or whatever. But again, it's like I said, it's rules is written, but then I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't mind adding the, the bonuses of a magic weapon or using spells against it. Um, but if you really want to make it super tough, that's, that's what you do. Punched so it. if it would have kept going, or hit it with my shield. If it would have kept going, I was going to step back and use spiritual hammer. Yeah. It's, it, it's, the hammer itself doesn't get any bonuses, but it's considered a magic weapon. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, that's one of the things is I just need to, a lot of times I'm like, uh, do I want to go rules was written? Eh. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh, where'd that yawn come from? But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was pretty decent. It was, it was, it was a quick combat because of the fireball, but now he's, yeah. now, he, now he doesn't have fireball. So that's, that's okay by me. So that's, one less powerful spell that he's got and you oh. haven't reached the boss level yet. <laughs> Maybe we can take a nap someplace. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're right. So, yeah, we're going to go into this room with all the sarcophagi in it and we're going to have a nap. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Is that what those are? Sarcophagi? Uh, I don't know. I haven't even looked. I haven't got that far. I'm only as far ahead as you guys are. I'm just playing along to go. So well, I as long as know. there's a uh, sarcophagi and not sarcophagirls. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're such a knucklehead. <laughs> and a turd. <laughs> this dungeon That's... is sexist. Yes, what's up with that? How dare you? 
Oh my God, dude, you're killing me. <laughs> so anyway, um, for those that um, are still hanging around, which that's what I was going to do. See, so yeah, it's like I go out there and then I close the channel because I forgot what I was doing out there. I want to look and see why did our channel didn't get a whole bunch of people watching tonight. I don't know if people were scrolling through or whatever, or maybe there was something going on tonight that uh yeah that everybody was uh like going or whatever the case may be like last monday man we were freaking rocking it's crazy but uh who do we want to let's see we've got darling creep show again we've only got a we got a few people out here so let's but like i said i wanted to take a look why is my automated moderator yeah, why he was up yep. to, something's, something's up with that. That's weird. Yeah. Boundary yeah. won't let him in. <laughs> the moderator's right? squelching his censoring his talk. Exactly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go out and um I'm gonna go out to my uh my dashboard. Uh let's see. Give me feed here, session. Yeah, I don't see anything. Uh, I don't see anything special uh, that I can do right here. Oh, automod queue. Let's let's see. I'm gonna like candy. <laughs> automod settings. There we go. Let's go. Um, we're going to go. Some, some, I'm just going to put some filtering on there. Uh, I should just take no filtering on the swear words. <laughs> we'll do less filtering because we are a, I put my channel as being, put my channel as being a adult. That's the word I was looking for. Adult channel? What? Yeah, I put oh, it as... Maybe he didn't put his red age in or something? No, nah, that's not it at all. It's so basically... Um, chatters. Email me right now. I want to do... Users meeting this criteria will be verified. Phone number will also be used to be able to chat. So basically, like my chat verification, I can make sure that people that are chatting are valid people on Twitch. They can't be like just somebody. Oh. Um, I'll do this. Sometime. First time chatters in my channel must have verified email. Chatters without a verified must have a account older than in a week. Chatters without a verified email must have followed for more than a day. So if they followed me, or they have been verified a council in a week. Um, we can also do a phone verification. So I'm going to put these on and make sure. I want to see if it jacks my, uh, jacks up my uh, folks next time. But do, 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 do. follower mode is off. Cause I don't like that moderator tools and chat. Okay. Good to go. All right. So this should be good. All right. So hopefully we will be able to prevent what happened tonight with happening again. So, but I do appreciate uh, everybody out there that has stuck with us. I know there's only a few folks out there in addition to us players, but you know what? Don't care. Get one or two. Uh, uh, oh, you know, want to mess with it? <laughs> I'm kind of going back through the chat. I really need to get better at following chat, but I'm, I'm really not that good. That's why I try to have moderators help me out to kind of figure out what's going on and stuff like that. So hopefully moderators in the chat will help, but, um, we're going to cut a little early tonight. I know normally we, we, we game till this time and then we hang out for another half hour, but I'm going to go ahead and jump us over. If you guys want to stay with us, I would appreciate it. If not, I appreciate the uh, 
Appreciate the love of you guys sticking with us. I'm going to raid over to somebody, but I don't know who yet. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Darling. Darling Creep Show. She's one of my favorites. I know she's one of Monkey's favorites too, so we'll go yeah, over there, show funny. her a little love. Yeah, she's pretty awesome, man. Um, she's, she's a she bartender too. Some, she was doing some Southern girl voices yeah. and I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, so let's go ahead and raid her over there uh, once again. I, uh, well, first of all, before we do that, let's go here and let's go to the stream as ending. We appreciate you guys staying with us. Um, I really do, man. I can't, I cannot believe that the, the love that I get every stream, man, it's like one or two every stream. I don't, I mean, and I really don't care that we get this whole big, huge volume, but we get the, the same folks over and over and over. And hopefully the word will start to spread and people will come over and hang with us. But you know, sometimes we're banging it. Other times we're a little slower, but it all works out in the wash. So we will see you guys Monday. next time, man. We're, remember, we're not streaming this Friday, but we will be here next Monday, same bat time, same bat channel. And until then, remember, in a world you can be anything you want. All we ask is that you be kind. Hang tight while we get ourselves go over there to Darling Creep Show. Oh, looks like we got a, like four people. I appreciate that. And I know she'll appreciate it. Every little bit counts. So we'll see you guys next week. Is that a fucking latte, you weirdo? Oh, hi, everybody. Oh, hey! Oh, let's pause for a second, because I'll die. It's, it's fucking for real that I, I shall die. Welcome. Apparently, I'm... Wow, 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 wow. Thank you for the raid and the 100 bits. Holy crap. Hey, everybody. How's it going? How's it going? Let's, uh... So, welcome to the gospel. <laughs> Getting proper weird tonight. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Praise the spider that I play him. This is going to come and eat you. Um, <laughs> welcome, everybody. I'm Darling Creep Show. I'm sure most of you already know this, but I'll say it again. I mostly play D&D. D&D &D really.